Welcome to Sammy J's Audiobooks channel. Your go-to plug for all genres of Sammy J novels audio narrations that will keep you yearning for more. Please subscribe and turn on post notification to get alerts on all new audiobooks upload. The Doctor's Secret Baby A Secret Baby Romance Novel by Sammy J narrated by Olivia Cope and Tom Fitzen. Chapter 13 Kelsey Aaron had me caged against the door, his arms on either side of me, his chest to my front, his face so close to mine that I could feel his every exhale. This man was an enigma, and I found myself desperately wanting to figure him out. One minute he'd be my best friend while we lounged on the couch with a tub of ice cream between us. The next, he'd come swooping in to save the day like my very own personal superhero. Two seconds later, he could piss me off like a brother would, or like Jason always had, and in the blink of an eye, his entire demeanor would soften, as if he were a teddy bear I could use for comfort. But the most surprising of all was how a minute later he could have such confidence, such dominance, such control with no more than a look or a touch or a single sentence. When he flipped that switch, every part of me wanted him. My mom won't love my baby as much as she loves theirs. Normally, I'd feel foolish for even uttering such shit. Hell, under any other circumstance, I would have realized what I had said and immediately attempted to retract it before he could pick up on any ounce of truth to my words. But not this time. Not while he kept me safe in the cage he'd offered with his body in the dark room. And certainly not while he ran his fingers along my face, drying my tears. He didn't speak, just dropped his forehead to mine and trailed his touch from my cheeks to my stomach, making sure to pay special attention to all the important parts along the way. And then, with his palm flat against my abdomen, he held me by the back of my neck, pulled me closer, and covered my lips with his. It was dark, not an ounce of the faint moonlight from the window reaching us, but even still, he knew exactly where my mouth was. He didn't miss the mark, and after the most intense kiss I'd ever experienced, which didn't last nearly as long as I would have liked, he pulled away just enough to speak. Everyone will fall in love with your baby, he whispered, while rubbing his thumb back and forth along my lower stomach. I froze, silently freaking out. Every muscle in my body became rigid, and no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't find the strength to speak. There was no way he knew. No way. But I couldn't come up with any other explanation as to why he would have said that. Why he would have continued to touch me the way he was. Pretend with me, he begged. His voice even softer than a moment ago. While his body held on to the dominance from before, he sounded more like the teddy bear side of him. And what was worse? There seemed to be aspects of all his personalities with me tonight. The best friend wanting me to play along, the hero wanting to save me. Thankfully, the only one missing was the one that resembled an older brother. I didn't need to ask, but I did anyway. Pretend what? This, he whispered, holding my stomach as if I were round with child. Pretend it's real, that everyone was excited for you tonight at dinner. Excited for your news. There was a good chance this might prove to be the worst idea ever. Worse than the first time around. But I couldn't stop myself from giving in. Our news, Aaron. Everyone was excited to find out that we are having a baby. In an instant, my feet were off the floor and I was in his arms, traveling through the dark room. And when my back met the mattress, he wasted no time fitting between my legs while owning my mouth. Never in a million years would I have thought a man would get aroused over this. But oh boy, was he turned on. And that passion hit me in the right spot with every roll of his hips, each thrust. It brought me higher and higher, never wanting this moment to end. And as though I was testing him, I muttered, I was worried you wouldn't want the baby. Aaron stilled. Not the reaction I wanted. But then he changed the game, flipped the script revised the plan. Why wouldn't I want a little girl with red hair like yours? Or a little boy with your sass and determination? Shit, Kelsey. I'd take as many as you'd give me. 
Fuck all the things. All the damn things. A little girl with my red hair and your green eyes. The faintest glow of night that drifted through my bedroom window called my attention to the smile on his face. Or a little boy with my sass and your smarts. Yes, please. He whispered across my lips before sealing his words with a kiss. My dress came off easily, and at first, I was terrified he'd see my stomach and realize this wasn't an act. I prayed it was too dark to see anything, and if he touched me, he wouldn't notice the softness that had settled along my waistline over the last two weeks. I didn't have the typical bump yet, which was the only reason I hadn't stopped this. The idea of him noticing anything was nothing but paranoia. Which was proven when he made his way down my chest to settle between my legs, lips hovering over my belly button. God, you'll look fucking amazing with a round stomach. He circled my navel with his tongue, uttering sexy yet scary things against my skin. If I had my way, you'd never wear clothes at home. You'd watch TV, make coffee, fold laundry, and brush your teeth completely fucking naked. So I could see every inch of your body, knowing you were giving me the greatest gift. I pushed up on my elbows to see him better, and when he glanced up, his eyes twinkling in the haze of night creeping past the blinds behind me, I couldn't stop myself from tracing the lines on his face with my fingertip. Either you're an amazing actor, or you're a special breed. There was also the possibility that he was certifiably insane, pretending to be married to someone and going along with the act that you're expecting a child together is odd enough, but as a sexual kink... Something wasn't right about that. Then again, I couldn't say much since I was in the role right there with him. Soft laughter filled his words when he asked, A special breed? Yeah. What guy gets excited about finding out he's having a baby with someone he's not even with? I no longer knew what was make-believe and what was real, and a very large part of me didn't care. Aaron was quiet for a moment. And then he climbed on top of me again, pushing me onto my back once more. As he hovered over me, he gently grazed my face the way an artist painted the lines and angles of a model. Don't think about it, Kelsey. Don't ask questions. Don't pick this apart looking for explanations. Just go with it like you did last time. Last time I was drunk, he stilled, as though he was unsure how to proceed. Do you want to stop? We don't have to do this if you don't want to. I was just trying to give... I grabbed his face and brought his mouth to mine, silencing him. It didn't matter how fucked up this was, or how either of us would feel in the morning. I needed it. I needed him. And I wasn't about to let him put a stop to it now. It didn't take long for his pants to land on the floor, or for his shirt to fly across the room. It took even less time for me to forget this wasn't real. Well... Except for the baby. I awoke the next morning with Aaron on my mind. Well, not just Aaron, but all the things he had done to me last night. I just lay there with my eyes closed, recalling every touch, every word, everything he'd made me feel. Of course, the pessimistic side of my brain told me he hadn't meant any of it. It had been a fantasy played out. Pretend. Make-believe. It had been nothing more than a role he'd acted out, a way to calm me down and get in my pants. But the other side, the one filled with ridiculous dreams and outlandish hopes, thanks to the bun in my oven throwing my hormones all out of whack, refused to believe that last night wasn't real. It refused to believe that the way he'd looked at me had all been an act, or that the words he'd whispered had lacked all sincerity. That was until I rolled over and found the other side of the bed empty. There was a chance he'd gone back to his room after I had fallen asleep last night. Maybe he'd worried about whether I wanted to wake up next to him, so he decided to take the safe route and sleep in his own bed. There were a hundred possible reasons why he wasn't next to me. He very well might have stayed all night and gotten up early for work. The only way to know for sure was to talk to him. And this was the biggest reason I had wanted to stay anonymous with him the last time. He would be stupid to carry on as if last night hadn't happened. No matter how hard a person tried, no one would be capable of forgetting the things we'd said to each other. In a way, I had confessed everything to him. 
I'd told him I was pregnant and he was the father. Now, if only I could figure out how much of his reaction had been an act and how much had been genuine. After getting my feelings and worries out on paper, which had become my therapy these days, I got ready for work. Today was an office day, so I didn't have to be there until 10. Granted, I was the boss, so I could have shown up whenever I wanted, or not at all. But since I expected everyone else to arrive by 10, I felt obligated to do so as well. Only two rings filtered through the speakers in my car before Tatum's voice filled the empty space around me. Except, rather than starting off our morning conversation with idle chit-chat, I blurted, I'm going to tell him today about the baby. I'd spoken so fast all my words ran together. It was as though I'd held on to a secret for too long and couldn't hold it in any longer. Wait, what? Tell who? The, uh, stripper. My baby's daddy. Sperm donor. Whatever you want to call him. You found him? How? It wasn't until right then that I realized just how little I'd filled her in on regarding this baby. Normally, I would have felt like a shitty person keeping such important details from my best friend. But that wasn't the case this time. I would have felt worse having to lie to her longer than I already had to. As ironic as it is... I ran into him. After a few moments of silence, two beeps resounded through the car's speakers, signaling the line had disconnected. I had just turned onto the bridge that took me from Samson to Langston, where my office was, so I assumed I had dropped the call. But before I could try her again, my phone rang. But this time, it was a FaceTime call. I'm driving, Tatum. I don't really think this is very safe. I held the device against the steering wheel so I could focus on the road without her having to look up my nostrils from my lap. It was the best I could do. Sorry, but you're going to have to start over and I need to see your face when you do. It's the only way I can tell if you're messing with me or not. Your voice doesn't give much away, so tell me again. How'd you find him? Are you alone or is Jason home? It's Tuesday. He's at work. Good. Just checking. I wouldn't put it past you to trick me into spilling the beans. Tatum sighed, which diverted my attention to the screen. Her sad eyes were distracting. How much longer are you going to wait before you tell your family? You don't have to keep it a secret. Nor do you have to do this alone. Your family, especially your mother, will be happy no matter how it happened. I'm just not there yet. Not to mention you literally just told them last night. So, I had a reason to keep it under wraps. I didn't need any negativity surrounding my wedding, and whether anyone means to or not, questioning our decision to get married so quickly is hurtful, and it's even worse when it's behind our backs. And you don't think it's any less hurtful for them to talk about me behind my back? Thank God for traffic lights. I came to a stop, able to give my full attention to Tatum. Waiting until you're too big to hide it anymore won't change the fact that you had a one-night stand with a stripper whose name you didn't even know. You're nine weeks, Kels. Too much longer and they'll figure it out for themselves. I realize I don't know your mom as well as you do, but I'm willing to bet she'll be more hurt if she finds out any other way than from you. You waited until you were 12 weeks, so can you allow me that same time span? The light changed to green, and as I slowly crept forward, easing into an even acceleration behind other vehicles, I regarded her through the phone's camera awaiting her response. Finally, she nodded and added, take as long as you want. I'm just being selfish, wanting the family to know there'll be two babies. I get it, and I want that too. But honestly, if I say anything in the next couple of weeks, it'll look like I'm trying to rain on your parade. I'd rather let them smother you with excitement before adding more to their plates. Lord knows my family doesn't need overstimulation. She laughed, which drew a smile to my own lips. Okay, so get on with it. How'd you find the stripper? I told you. I ran into him. Knowing her next question would be where I'd run into him, I decided to beat her to the punch. At least this way it kept me from having to make something up. I was on my phone and when I looked up, there he was. We've seen each other a lot over the last several weeks and I slept with him again. You did what? Telling her I'd jumped into bed with the stripper who had fathered my child was my get-out-of-jail-free card. And I knew it, too. It was enough to keep her from questioning me about things I wasn't ready to answer. 
And at the same time, it kept me from having to lie. You hooked up with him again? Why? And why haven't you told him about the baby yet? It's complicated. I honestly did try several times to tell him, but each time I opened my mouth to spit it out, I got interrupted by him or someone else. If it wasn't that, there was some reason that kept me from saying anything until I finally gave up. After that, I felt like it'd be best to wait and see how things went. The last thing I want to do is scare him off with news like that. And I kind of want to get to know him a little better. He's really not that bad of a guy, and he's not at all dumb like I thought. So then why tell him today? I took a second to formulate the perfect way to explain this. We talked last night, and the topic of babies came up. He wasn't at all freaked out by the idea of having a kid with me. I think that was what I needed. Maybe what I was waiting for all along? A sign to let me know it would be all right? That he wouldn't run off and ruin everything? Well, that's good. Although I'm not sure how you got into that kind of conversation. Then again, this is you we're talking about. I don't understand half the things you do, such as sleeping with a stripper to begin with. My office wasn't too far ahead, so I kept my eyes on the road, refraining from looking at Tatum as I responded. It started by me expressing how upset I was over my mom's reaction to your news. Why were you upset? Is that why you left? Pulling into the parking lot, I sighed and took my time answering her. It's stupid, Tatum. I realize these damn hormones make me crazy. But when I saw her get all excited, I thought to myself, she won't act that way for me when I tell her. I know she says she wouldn't care how I got pregnant, but I'm not stupid. She would, whether she wants to admit it or not. And then there's my dad. He looked all happy last night. When I tell him about me, I'll have to see the disappointment in his eyes, not the joy you saw. And let's not forget Marlena's comment about how I don't have to worry about giving mom a baby because she can fuss over yours, as if kids are replaceable and hold no value. Wow. I didn't even hear her say that. I'm sorry, Kels, but honestly, I don't think you'll have anything to worry about. You don't have to tell them who the father is if you don't want to, or even how you got pregnant to begin with. No one needs to know it was a one-night stand. Hell, if you can keep them from finding out. You don't even need to tell them he's a stripper. Don't worry about that one, Tater. They will never find out that part. So you're telling him today? When? My chest tightened and my ears began to ring. Clearly, I was nervous no matter how many pep talks I'd had with myself since waking up this morning. I just had to bite the bullet and get it over with, knowing and trusting it would all work out in the end. After work, I shouldn't have too much to do today, so when I leave here, I'll go see him. I figured it'll probably be best if I give him some time to digest it before... I cleared my throat correcting myself before I gave too much away. Before I see him tonight, if I see him tonight, that is. Oh, do you have plans with him later? I pulled my lips to one side and glanced out the window, wondering how I could word this for her without saying too much or being too vague. We don't necessarily have plans, but in the event he comes over to watch a movie or something, I just want to be prepared, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. Well, good luck. You'll have to let me know how it goes. I'll be anxiously awaiting a phone call this afternoon, and if you need a pep talk beforehand, you know how to find me. Thanks, Tater. You're the best. A giant smile stretched across her face. I do what I can. I disconnected the call, took a moment to pull myself together, and then went to work. Surprisingly, it ended up being a busier day than I'd expected. Normally, Tuesdays were planning days. We had the schedule of upcoming open houses, as well as a list of future projects that would require more time and effort. It was basically the day we went through the inventory catalog and paired furniture with certain projects, so we knew exactly what we'd need and have it ready ahead of time. But today, on top of my typical agenda, I also had a crisis with a builder to defuse, and by the time I finished rearranging my entire calendar, it was almost five. There went my early day, up in flames. One of the reasons I'd decided to talk to Aaron today about the baby was because I figured I'd be done with work around four, which would have left me with time to stop by his office on the way home. I didn't want to tell him about it at the apartment, where neither of us really had anywhere to go in the event it didn't pan out the way I hoped. 
This way, he'd have time to wrap his mind around being a father before leaving work, giving us a better chance at discussing everything without the initial shock I was sure he'd feel. Luckily, as I passed his office, I noticed his truck in the parking lot. There was only one other car, so I assumed that meant either he was with his last patient, or the only people left inside were him and his receptionist. I was willing to take my chances. My heart thundered inside my chest as I parked my car. While walking toward the building, my throat nearly closed up, and when I opened the door, the world began to tilt. I stood inside the vacant waiting room, the cold air blasting my face and took a moment to get a grip. There was no way I'd be able to tell him anything if I were on the verge of passing out or throwing up. And after a solid minute of nothing but standing alone with my eyes closed, taking deep breaths and giving myself a pep talk, I was ready. Or at least I thought I was. No one sat at the front desk, which meant there was a good chance he still had a patient in the back. After peeking down the hallway, I noticed his door cracked open and voices coming from inside, a man and a woman. So I calmly made my way toward his office, unable to hear much of what was said as I approached due to the blood rushing in my ears. But once I stood on the other side of the door, hand in the air to grab the knob, I froze. Shit, Noel. I don't know how much longer I'll last. Filtered through the crack, the words wrapped in a deep, desperate voice. It was followed up by a woman moaning. That's okay, baby. Panting filled the quiet spaces in between, as well as the distinct sound of one person frantically slamming into another. But what made me abandon my mission was when he said, Fuck, I love you so much. I couldn't take any more. It was too much to handle. So I ran. I ran and I didn't look back. I couldn't do this again. Never, ever again. Chapter 14 Aaron When it rained, it poured. All day, I'd looked forward to getting done with work so I could see Kelsey. Last night had been intense, and I worried how she'd react today. I hadn't stuck around last time to see how she was the next morning. There was no way to know if she had freaked out, if she'd thought about it, or if she had gone about her life as if nothing at all had happened the night before. So I had nothing to go on this time. The one thing I did know, though, was that I didn't want her thinking I'd been gone all day to avoid her. Because that wasn't the case. I'd been called to the hospital to evaluate a patient. It wasn't unusual to have a doctor ask me to come in and give my opinion. I just wished they had picked another time to ask me. Then again, I doubted the woman had planned to be involved in a car accident today. So, there was that. It was just frustrating, because the last thing I wanted this evening was to get home late. It had been one thing after another. My truck wouldn't crank, so I had to take Noelle's car to the hospital, leaving her to call her husband to pick her up. After the consultation, I'd dropped off my old battery, bought a new one, and then swapped Noelle's car for my truck at the office. Now it was almost eight, and I was finally climbing the steps to the apartment. I found Kelsey on the couch, curled against the armrest with a blanket, the TV glowing in front of her. She barely made eye contact before returning her attention to the screen, not saying anything to me. That wasn't a good sign. So I decided to ease my way into this, feel her out, evaluate the entire situation before coming to any conclusions. Oh, I love this movie. I didn't. In fact, it had to have been the worst film ever created, but if I had to pretend it was amazing just to be in the same room as her... Then I'd make this movie sound like it was worthy of an Oscar. Let me get the ice cream. It's all gone. I stilled behind the couch, where she couldn't see me. As if she would have seen me had I been in front of her, considering she refused to take her eyes off the TV for two seconds. You ate it all? I asked with a laugh, trying to act like nothing was off with us, even though it would have been obvious to a stranger that something wasn't right. Want me to go to the gas station and see what they have? I can be back in, like, five minutes. Or I can run up to the store, but that might take me longer. 
You're about to get to the good part. I don't care, Aaron. Do what you want. There was something in her voice that I couldn't ignore. It called to me, drawing me closer until I was on the couch next to her, and once I was close enough, it was impossible to miss the glassy appearance of her eyes, even without her looking at me. I pinched her chin between my fingers and eased her neck to the side, forcing her to face me. What happened? Are you okay? My throat closed up at the possibility I had caused this. Whether it was what we'd done last night or my absence all day, I was to blame. But what worried me the most was how closed off she seemed. If I couldn't get her to open up to me, I wouldn't be able to make it right. Do you remember me telling you about my ex? The cop who was married? My face flamed with heat, anger burning within me at the mere thought of that douche. Yeah, what about him? Did you run into him again today? What did he do? She shook her head slowly and dropped her gaze to her lap. Nothing. And, no, I didn't see him. Then what's wrong? So I told you that we were together for two years. That's two Christmases, two sets of birthdays. His and mine. Two Valentine's Days, two Thanksgivings, two of everything. There wasn't a holiday in those two years that I didn't see him. There were many nights he stayed with me. Weekends he didn't leave other than to go to work, but he'd come back to my place and fall asleep with me in his arms. She paused to take a deep breath, the raw emotions from dredging this up pooling in her eyes. I grabbed her hand to offer her support or comfort, yet she yanked it away. When she continued with her story, she made sure to meet my gaze, contempt, shooting daggers at me while she spoke. We had talked about marriage, about kids. We even discussed a destination wedding, possibly going to the Caribbean or Hawaii. He would told me he wanted three kids, and I told him I only wanted one, even though I would have had as many as he wanted. My heart ached with every word that fell from her lips. But I didn't do or say anything. I simply let her get it out. Let her lay it all on the table so I could figure out what she needed from me. As of right now, she clearly wasn't interested in anything I could offer. So imagine my surprise when I heard that he was married. Had been married the entire time we were together. I felt like an utter fool. But the worst part was that I didn't leave him when I found out. I confronted him. We thought about it. And in the end, had he told me that he would leave her, I would have stayed. Kelsey wiped an errant tear from her cheek. He made me weak. He made me stupid. And because of him, I swore I'd never allow myself to be that vulnerable with someone else ever again. That doesn't make you weak or stupid. People do all kinds of things for love. Or should I say the interpretation of such? since it's nothing more than endorphins and emotions that create the concept of love. I'm sure most people would have been willing to stick around in that same situation, Kelsey. She glared at me, making me retrace every word I'd spoken in case I had said something offensive without realizing it. I was the other woman. And even if she had been the other woman, it wouldn't have changed anything. I was willing to stay with a cheater... Someone who had no problem lying to my face. That's weak, Aaron. I wasn't sure what to say to that, because it seemed she wasn't happy with anything I could come up with to justify her actions. So instead, I chose to sit there and listen until she was absolutely done talking. After I confronted him, he told me that he wasn't happy with her, that she never wanted kids and he did. I heard about what a bitch she was to him all the time, and how nothing he ever did was good enough. I felt bad for him. I wanted him to leave her, not necessarily for me, but because he was a good person who deserved better than that. I take it he didn't leave her? She shook her head, yet chose to answer anyway. He stayed because she had money. He was a cop, so it wasn't like he was bringing home the bacon. 
She came from old money, and I guess he wasn't willing to give up the bank account, no matter how miserable he was with her. It wasn't until later that I started finding out more of the truth than he'd let on. She wasn't a bitch. Oh, and they didn't have kids because he had gotten snipped before they got married. From what I've heard, she actually wanted a baby and had even contemplated adoption. He's the one who said no. So, everything he told you was a lie? Pretty much. He had two different Facebook accounts, both with super high privacy settings to keep either of us from finding out about the other. The one I knew of had tons of pictures of us together. And apparently the one she knew of was filled with photos and posts of her. It was like he knew exactly what he was doing, playing us both, using his job as a way to keep us from finding out where he was sleeping at night. I wanted to tell her, and I almost did. But he reminded me of what that would look like to everyone. No one would believe for one second that I didn't know about her. I'd be dismissed as the woman he didn't choose. The one he didn't leave his wife for. And because of that, it did look like the only reason I told her was to get back at him. The more she explained about this asshole, the worse I hated him. And I hadn't thought I could hate him more after finding out he'd been married while seeing Kelsey. Apparently I was wrong. Because I'd found a new level of loathing. I'm not sure where this is all coming from, Kelsey. She sighed and stood from the couch. I just wanted to let you know that no matter what has happened between us, my mind hasn't changed. I still have no desire to get married. I don't want to play house and raise babies with anyone. Is this about last night? I stood and followed her, stopping a couple of feet behind her when she reached her bedroom door. If it is, tell me so we can talk about it, please. Don't just make assumptions and verbally slam a door in my face without giving me a chance to discuss it first. Yes, it's about last night. And the very first night. But I don't want to talk about it, because we're pretending it never happened, right? Isn't that what you said? Act as if we've never slept together? Well, that's what I'm doing, Aaron. And I suggest you do the same. She didn't waste a second before closing herself off in her room, leaving me alone with more questions than answers. Maybe it was good that I hadn't seen her the day after the bachelorette party. You're gonna have to start over, Aaron. Noelle moved around to the waiting room, cleaning up after a busy day while I sat in a chair and listened. Last I knew, you were desperately trying to find somewhere else to live so you didn't have to move in with the, and I quote, man-hater. Now you're asking for advice on wooing her? How do you go from wanting nothing to do with her to wanting to make her like you? I never said woo. That word would never come out of my mouth. She perched her fists on her hips and glared at me. What word you used or didn't use is irrelevant, asshole. Thank God for the smile on her lips and the slight lilt of humor in her tone. How long have you lived with her? Almost five weeks. And how many times have you slept with her? Nothing got past her. I felt bad for her husband. Twice, including the first time, which shouldn't really count because I didn't know who she was at the time. The other one happened a little over a week ago. And let's just say that didn't turn out so well. I told you this would happen. She didn't have to look at me to make her point. Her eye roll was implied. But you assured me it wouldn't. You said she hated men, and she was your best friend's little cousin. But I know you, Aaron. Her stare literally pinned me to my seat, making it impossible to move. Can we skip the I told you so's? It just kind of happened. She got upset last week at dinner when Tatum told everyone she was pregnant. Her mom and sister made her feel like shit, and when we got home, she made a comment about how her mom would love Tatum's baby more than her own. More than Kelsey's? Yeah. I didn't know Kelsey was pregnant. She's not. 
Noel plopped into a chair in front of me with narrowed eyes and a cocked head. Then why is she upset about a baby she's not even having? I'm highly confused here, Aaron. It was more hypothetical. Like, if she were to ever have a baby, it would just be a baby to everyone. No one cares who the mother is or how they're related to it. I guess her mom has been making comments about her settling down and having a family, and now that Tatum's fulfilling that role, she doesn't care what Kelsey does. That's her interpretation of it, at least. So how did that lead to sex for the second time? This would have been much easier to explain to Jason, considering he knew about the role-playing concept from the first time. Now that I knew Kelsey was his cousin, there was no way I'd go to him about this. Which left me with either filling Noelle in on the bachelorette party or keeping the entire thing vague. I doubted she'd be able to help me if she didn't have the details, so I decided to start from the beginning. And that's how we wound up in bed for the second time. She stared at me with wide, blinking eyes, a combination of disgust and mortification on her face. There's something severely wrong with you, Aaron. I'm concerned. The first, sure, I can kind of understand how that might have happened, but this time? Who in their right mind gets off on the thought of knocking someone up? I shrugged, having figured this would be her reaction. It was why I hadn't wanted to go into the whole story with her, but I doubted she'd be able to offer much advice without it. And now that she'd basically condemned me in my own office, I wished I'd never told her in the first place. No one would understand, because I doubted many people were in my shoes. She certainly wasn't. You should ask your husband. I bet the idea of you carrying his baby turns him on. She softened a little bit, but that didn't last long. Okay, but we're married, and we're trying to get pregnant. Of course the idea of me having his child would excite him, but I doubt it would make him want to have sex with me. You'd be surprised. You should text him and ask. Even though she rolled her eyes and laughed at me... She pulled her phone out of her pocket and began to tap on the screen while carrying on with her conversation with me. Regardless, you aren't married to her. You aren't in love with her. Your theory is flawed. Maybe. Maybe not. After sending her text, she met my eyes again. This time they were soft, full of sympathy, which I hated. You're in love with the idea of being in love. That's dangerous, Aaron. It can't just be anybody, but it's like you're too impatient to let things naturally happen. I pushed out of the chair and walked around her toward my office. Forget it. I'd learned this lesson before, but it seemed I needed a refresher course. Never tell a woman to forget it. She wouldn't. Never mind should also never be uttered to a female. All it did was make them more interested in your business. And this time it led Noel into my office with her arms crossed and face pinched with that don't brush me off and then walk away expression. What am I missing here, Aaron? You slept with a girl twice. Both times were fulfilling some sort of fantasy, whether it was hers, yours, or somewhere in between. Either way, it wasn't real. Yet you seem to have missed that part. I haven't missed any part, Noel. I know it wasn't real, okay? I'm not confused about anything. I'm not in love with her and she's not having my baby. I'm not delusional. That could be argued by some, but that was a moot point. I just need advice on how to get her to talk to me. Prior to last Monday night, we were good. We joked, spent time together, watched movies on the couch while eating ice cream from the carton. But now, she can't stand to be in the same room as me. So this has been going on for a week? Yes. The only time she talks to me is when she finds new houses for me to look at. And the conversations aren't even pleasant. I feel like she's telling me I need to find something soon and get out of her apartment. 
Noelle's brows dipped. She wasn't ever pushy before? No, I said, shaking my head. She'd let me know when she found something, but we'd always go together to look at them. Granted, there weren't many that I wanted to see, but at least she drove with me, and we'd walk through the houses together. She doesn't even do that anymore. Now it's just, here, let me know if you need the realtor's info for any of these. And then she's gone, locked in her room where she spent the last week. And this all happened after the night you had sex? Yes. I came home that next day from work, which was the day I had to go to the hospital and my truck broke down. And then I had to get a battery on my way home and swap your car for mine after getting mine to crank. It was like eight o'clock before I got home, so I don't know if she thinks I was avoiding her or what. I don't have a clue what to do or how to fix it, which is why I came to you. Not to get a lecture about how fucked up I am. She lowered herself into the chair across from my desk and gestured for me to do the same. And once I sat next to her, she relaxed in her seat, her expression soft and comforting. Start from the beginning, Aaron. Tell me everything. I'm not sure, could be wrong, but I believe the sauce is supposed to go in the pasta, not on the floor. I glanced down at Noelle, who was currently on her hands and knees in my kitchen, cleaning Alfredo sauce off the tile, while I worked at getting the splatter off my work pants. After telling Noelle everything yesterday, she'd offered to help me cook Kelsey dinner tonight. We'd rushed to leave the office, making sure we gave ourselves enough time to get everything done before Kelsey came home from work. Well, if you weren't rushing me, I wouldn't have dropped the spoon, she argued from the floor. I never claimed to be a cook. You should have called your friend's wife. Isn't she good at this kind of crap? Tatum? Yeah, she used to be a chef. Now she writes cookbooks. But I can't ask her because she'd want to know why I'm doing this and I can't tell her what I've done with Kelsey. You seriously think Kelsey hasn't already told her? Aren't they best friends too? Yes, but she's also married to Kelsey's cousin. So I can almost guarantee that she hasn't told her anything. If she has, I would have gotten a phone call from Jason by now, and he hasn't said anything to me about it. Noelle finished wiping off the tile, sat back on her haunches, and pointed to my pants. You might want to take those off and throw them in the wash. You're only making it worse. Glancing down, I took note of the wet spot near the zipper where I'd scrubbed the material with a damp paper towel. She was right. It looked bad. But before I could concede and change into something clean, the front door opened. I whipped my head around to find Kelsey walking in. But Noelle didn't move until the door closed. Noelle popped up in my peripheral, but with my eyes on Kelsey, I didn't miss the transformation from surprised to pissed. You're home early. And I sounded guilty as fuck. Then again, I was. She'd specifically asked me not to bring anyone over, yet I had, even if my intentions were good. We were, uh... Just making dinner. Kelsey didn't say anything. She just stood near the door and nodded. Hi, I'm Noelle. It's so nice to meet you. Noelle tossed the sponge into the sink and then walked around to the breakfast bar with her hand out to greet Kelsey. Noelle? Kelsey glanced from the woman in front of her to me, then back to Noelle again. Yes, and you're Kelsey, right? Aaron's roommate she once again turned her eyes to me yeah something like that his parents finally kicked him out of the house so he needed a place to stay for a couple of months i have a tendency to take in strays although i'm starting to feel like this one won't ever leave she took noelle's hand and shook it hard and how do you know him oh i'm his receptionist noelle giggled a sign of her discomfort I'm basically his right-hand man at the office. He'd be lost without me. I bet he would. Maybe I should just start sending you the listings of houses I find for Aaron. Maybe you could get him to find a place relatively soon. 
I prayed I wasn't about to get evicted for a second time in less than two months. Picking up on Kelsey's resentment, Noelle glanced at me from over her shoulder. I should probably get home. You've, um... You got it from here, right? Yep, I sure do. Thanks for all your help, Noelle. I walked out of the kitchen and met both women near the door, fully aware of the daggers Kelsey launched at me from her heated glare. Let me walk you out. It was nice meeting you, Kelsey. Noelle called after Kelsey had walked away, heading toward her room to likely lock herself in there for the rest of the day. Once we got outside, Noelle stopped me cold with wide eyes. I think you drastically underestimated her anger, Aaron. I doubt dinner will be enough to warm her back up. She's like a block of ice in a freezer. Now do you see why I asked for help? She laughed and patted my arm. Oh, honey, you need more than help. I don't know what else to do. Find a house and get out as fast as you can. Stop being picky about what you buy. Anything can be fixed up, and if it's in a bad neighborhood, just get a security alarm for the doors and bars for the windows. I'm sure that'll be safer than staying here. Thanks. You're a lot of help. Sorry, but you're on your own with this one. Without knowing what her deal is, I can't possibly begin to offer advice or suggestions on how to make it right. It seems she's pissed about something, and without knowing what it is, there's nothing you're going to be able to do about it. I nodded, not wanting to concede her point, but knowing she was right. Thanks anyway, Noelle. I'll let you know on Monday what happens. If you don't show up, I'm calling the cops and sending them here. She stepped away and waved. As she headed down the hall, she called over her shoulder. Good luck, my friend. Good luck. I'd need more than that to get Kelsey to talk to me. If this was how relationships were, I no longer wanted one. It was far too much work, only to be left feeling like the ball in a world championship game of ping pong. I couldn't keep up. It was impossible to fix something or apologize for doing something wrong if I didn't know what the issue was. It had been 20 minutes since Kelsey had come home from work, and she'd spent the entire time in her room. Rather than knock or try to talk to her, I'd finished making dinner. But now that it was time to eat, I wasn't sure if I should bother her or just let her know her plate would be in the microwave when she was ready to come out. In the end, I chose to call her out, refusing to let this go on any longer. Kelsey, I said while wrapping my knuckle against her closed door. Dinner's ready. Come eat before it gets cold. I'm not hungry. Yeah. This from the girl who could eat a horse and then wash it down with a bucket of ice cream. I made you a plate. Just come eat it. And then you can go back to locking me out as if I've done something wrong. Apparently, that was all I had to say to get her to leave her room. She whipped the door open and stood before me in a long, oversized t-shirt and yoga pants that didn't reach her ankles. As if... You did something wrong? Are you kidding me right now, Aaron? I held up my hands in surrender, though I wasn't about to back down that easily. No, I'm not. I get that you're pissed about Noelle being here without your knowledge, and I'm sorry for that. I asked her for help because I wanted to make you something other than hamburger helper for dinner, and I don't know the first thing about cooking a real meal. I honestly didn't think about it, and for that, I'm truly sorry. She crossed her arms over her chest and leaned into the doorframe. However, she didn't utter a word or even make a gesture that would offer any clue to what went through her mind. She gave me nothing to go on other than heated anger pouring off her rigid body and pain emanating from her sad, confused eyes. But I took a step forward. This has been going on for over a week. Your resentment toward me didn't start today. It's not about me having someone at the apartment without your consent. And it'd be nice if you offered me something so that I knew what the hell I've done wrong. You're an idiot. She wasn't wrong, though 
I would need more specifics. Eventually, she caved and gave me what I sought. Kind of. You must think I'm stupid. That I don't know what I walked in on? Yeah, that didn't help. Like, at all. You walked in on us making you dinner. What am I missing here? She pointed to my pants, the same pair of khakis I'd worn earlier with the mess still decorating the crotch. If you want your right-hand man to suck you off, fine, go for it. You do you and all that. But don't you dare disrespect me by having her on her knees in my fucking kitchen. Whoa! It took a few seconds for me to form coherent words after that accusation. What? No. Baby, that's not what she was doing. Kelsey balked, eyes wide and mouth dropped open. Every emotion that had coursed through her a minute ago amplified. The heated anger began to boil, and the pain intensified into a deep ache that would bring the strongest man to his knees. Don't ever call me that again. I'm not your baby. I have a name, and if it's too hard to keep all of your women straight, then mark me off that list. Get the hell out, and don't ever talk to me again. That way you won't have to remember what to call me. I had no idea what I'd walked into. But now there was no way out. I had to see this through, no matter how confusing and muddled it had all become in a matter of seconds. I'm sorry, Kelsey. I didn't mean... I shook my head, realizing she didn't care about my excuses. It won't happen again. I swear. But that's not what Noelle was doing here. My God. She's married. Her top lip curled, disgust radiating off her in waves. That's even worse. No. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Nothing happened with her. Ever. She's like a little sister to me. She's worked for me for years. I was at her wedding. Her husband is a great guy. I would never. I eventually stopped talking when I realized she wasn't listening to a word I said. You could at least come up with better ways to lie. They're always like a sister, aren't they? Which, if you think about it, is really fucked up. I can't tell you how many times I've heard a guy refer to a woman as a sister, yet sleep with her anyway. That's just it, Kelsey. I've never slept with her. I have no desire to. Where is this coming from? I glanced down at my pants again, following her line of sight. Shit. Noelle was right. This looked way worse than it was. This is Alfredo sauce. And she was on her knees. Why? She was cleaning up the mess. The Alfredo sauce. The spoon fell and splattered all over me. She was wiping up the floor while I was trying to clean it off my pants. Then you walked in. We weren't doing anything. I'd never thought I'd have to defend myself where Noelle was concerned. Whether or not that's true, it doesn't mean you aren't sleeping with her. I caught you, Aaron. I went into your office last week to talk to you, and you were bending her over your desk. That stunned me silent for far longer than an innocent man should be. Finally, I shook off the shock and attempted to make sense of this. When? I've never had sex with her, let alone bent her over my desk for any reason. It doesn't matter. The point is... You did. And then you brought her here after I've asked you that you don't have anyone over aside from Jason. She dropped her arms and closed her eyes for a moment. When she opened them again, a softer side shone through. I just don't like to be disrespected, Aaron. That's all. And that's exactly how I feel right now. But I'm telling you, nothing happened. 
And my ex told me his wife was a horrible person. She shrugged, the will to fight no longer present in her posture. I don't put much stock into what guys say anymore. You're all the same. You all must share tips on how to lie or what to say to pull on a woman's heartstrings. Unfortunately for you, it no longer works on me. I didn't know what to say or do. It seemed nothing would make this right. I doubted even the truth from Noel would make Kelsey second-guess her assumptions. And that's exactly what they were, assumptions. The same thing I had to battle with every other female I'd ever encountered. Silly me for thinking Kelsey was any different. I'll go through the listings you gave me this week. And if I don't find anything, then I'll figure something else out. You won't have to worry about me disrespecting you anymore. I grabbed her plate off the counter and took it two steps to the kitchen table. I tried to make the asparagus the same way it was done at the wedding. I remember you saying you liked it. Then I took my plate, tossed it into the sink, and went to my room. Disregarding the silence that came from Kelsey the entire time I was walking away from her. I spent the rest of the evening and night looking at houses. Some on her list and others I'd come across while searching online. One stood out above the rest, though. It had been at the bottom of Kelsey's email, a note attached to it, pointing out how it was big enough for a family and how the front room could be a nursery or a home office. After a few emails back and forth with the realtor, I made an appointment to check it out the next day, as well as others he thought I might be interested in. But rather than the excitement I had felt when walking through houses with Kelsey, I felt empty. And I couldn't begin to understand why. Maybe Noel had been right that I was in love with the idea of love. Too bad that wouldn't keep me warm at night. My mood had progressively deteriorated since Friday night, and come Monday morning I walked into my office a zombie, or that character from Oz without a heart. I take it your weekend didn't get any better? Noelle asked from her desk. Based on the purse that still hung on her shoulder and the way she sat almost sideways in her chair, I assumed she had gotten there a minute or two before me. Normally, I'd hang around the front for a few minutes chatting with Noel, especially on a Monday when we had more to catch up on. But this time, I didn't care to hang out or fill her in on anything. Instead, I passed by her with a simple, I bought a house. Wait up. She chased after me, her purse still on her shoulder. You bought a house? Why aren't you excited? Why are you walking around like someone killed your cat? Why do I have to be a cat person? Why can't I be a dog owner? Or maybe a beast like a lion or a tiger? Oh my! Sarcasm didn't look good on her. It looked much better on Kelsey. Let me rephrase. Why are you walking around like someone killed your abominable snowman? I glared at her, not in the mood for her mockery this morning. I had a really crappy weekend, Noel. No thanks to you. So if it's all right, I'd like a little time to get my day started so I don't scare off my patients. She stood motionless, only blinking rapidly for a few moments before shaking it off, revealing her utter confusion. No thanks to me? What's that supposed to mean? For some reason, Kelsey is under the impression that you and I are sleeping together. She went off on me Friday night about how I disrespected her by bringing you to the apartment. Then she accused us of having sex, saying she caught me bending you over my desk. I don't even know what the hell she's talking about. But I'm fucking sick and tired of everyone making assumptions, acting like they know the first thing about me, and then holding it over my head as if I've done something wrong just because they think I did something that I didn't. I leaned back in my seat and took a deep breath, needing to calm down, before I had a heart attack. Noelle was quiet for too long, only to come back with... She said she caught us having sex in here? Really? 
That's the only thing you have to say? Did she, um... Uh, did she happen to mention anything else about it? Like, perhaps when? I was over the women in my life. Ready to take a vow of celibacy and silence. Surrounding myself with nature, as that seemed to be the only way to avoid this mess. I didn't exactly question her, Noelle. It never happened, so why would I press a non-existent issue? She's clearly crazy. Well, what if she's not? Not what? Not crazy? I laughed, even though I found none of this funny. Am I missing something here? Did I somehow fuck you and block it out? Do I need to perform a neuropsyche eval on myself? She fell into a chair across from my desk, fear staring back at me. So, do you remember that day last week when you asked to borrow my car and I had to have Pete pick me up from work? Yeah. I already didn't like where this was going. Well, you see, the doctor said we shouldn't let sex become clinical. That makes no fucking sense at all. She huffed and hung her head. The doctor said there's nothing wrong with Pete or me and that we should just stop worrying about it, lose the stress of it all, and have fun with each other, rather than pay attention to ovulations and periods and positions. I don't need to hear any more, really. I think I understand. No one was in the office that day. It was after hours, and I thought it wouldn't hurt if we tried to spice it up a little. It took too much effort to get the words out, but eventually I was able to say, Are you saying you had sex with Pete in my office? I could have sworn the front door was locked. I don't know how she could have caught me unless she was looking through the window. But honestly, you keep the blinds. That's enough, Noel. I ran my hands through my hair and gripped the overgrown strands until my scalp ached. It doesn't matter how she caught you or what she saw because she thinks it was me. And that was the day after I'd spent the night with her. No wonder she thinks I disrespected her. What the hell were you thinking? I was thinking I want a baby with my husband and after over a year of trying with no luck, I guess I got desperate. I saw an opportunity and I took it, not thinking about how it could affect you. I'm sorry. If you're going to fire me, I understand. Just let me finish getting the files ready for the day, and then I'll be gone. Noelle, wait. I caught her before she exited the room. I'm not firing you. But that doesn't mean I'm okay with what you did. For your sake, I really hope it worked. I'd feel better if one good thing came out of it. It'll work out for you too. I just know it. I didn't believe it. My luck had always been shitty. And I didn't see it ever getting better. At least you have a house now. Yeah, there's that. And in a month, I'd move into that house alone. Live there alone. And fill the room at the front with a desk and office supplies, knowing it'd never be the nursery Kelsey had suggested. Chapter 15, Kelsey. For the first time in eight years, I played hooky. Unfortunately, I couldn't blame it on alcohol, the pregnancy, a death in the family, or even an emergency such as a car accident on the way to work. The reason I chose to stay home today was purely selfish. I needed a little best friend time. So rather than drive to the office this morning, I headed straight to my cousin's house. You can't avoid this forever, Tatum said from the other side of the bed, passing me the bag of cheese puffs. He has a right to know about his kid, no matter who or how many women he's sleeping with. I know, but I'm just not ready yet. Well, you're going to end up running out of time before you're ready, Kels. I hate to break it to you, but you can't put this off forever. That little bean sprout will come in no time, and then you'll be stuck having to explain why you never told him. I shoved a handful of artificially flavored crap into my mouth and spoke around the processed food. I don't have to explain shit. He doesn't deserve it. He'll be lucky if I even put his name on the birth certificate. 
I'll give my baby the last name Pitt and tell everyone its dad is Brad. He's got a litter anyway. I doubt he'd notice one more. Really? Brad Pitt? I'd go with Tom Hardy. I rolled my eyes as I handed her the bag. Technically, she snatched it away from me and grabbed the remote to find something else to watch. Commercials messed with my attention span. Honestly, if TV would cut out the ads, I bet shows would have more viewers. These cheese puffs aren't making me happy. I said around my orange-colored fingers between my lips. What kind of pregnant woman doesn't have ice cream? This pregnant woman? And stop changing the subject. Does this mean you don't plan to ever tell him? Or did you just put it on the wait list once again? I don't know why the topic of my baby's father is so fascinating to you. Because you're so damn wishy-washy about it. It's like a soap opera. And now that I'm home way more than usual, I need something to entertain me. Your drama does that. She popped another orange puff into her mouth. Plus, you're the one who came here crying about it. I'd be a shitty friend if I didn't keep us on topic. There's nothing more to discuss, tater twat. She laughed so hard I worried she'd choke on the crap she'd shoved in her mouth. Luckily, she didn't. If she had, I wouldn't know how to explain it to Jason, since he was under the impression that Tatum had been on a rather healthy diet since she found out she was pregnant. I stared at her with a straight face, waiting for her cackles to end, so I could finish speaking and, hopefully, put an end to this conversation. Seriously, though, I've fully caught you up on all the baby daddy drama. Don't lie. There's still so much more to tell, such as... You still haven't admitted that you have real feelings for the guy, and that's why you ran last week instead of telling him about the baby. It had nothing to do with catching him bending some chick over his desk, and everything to do with feeling rejected. Rather than look at her, knowing she'd seen the truth in my eyes, I kept my attention on the television that sat on her dresser and continued to flip through the channels. I thought if I acted calm, cool, and collected, she'd believe me when I said... I feel nothing for the heartless, arrogant, lying sack of sperm. Wow, Kels. You almost had me. I was this close to taking you seriously. She held her fingers so close together I couldn't see through them. I smiled and shook my head, wondering why I even bothered trying to keep anything from her. What was it that gave me away? Sack of sperm. If you truly hated him, you wouldn't have wasted your time with such colorful words. She raised one eyebrow, chin tilted to the side. I must have zoned out while contemplating what she said, because I'd stopped flipping the channels without realizing it. It wasn't until she muttered something about a house that I snapped out of it. What? Aaron's new house, she said, as if I knew what the hell she was talking about. When she realized how confused I was, she pointed to the screen and continued to explain. That house. It looks like the one Aaron just bought. Yeah, I got that part. I guess I was a bit lost at the news that Aaron bought something. Last time I checked, he was still looking. But then again, it wasn't like we'd spoken to each other since our big blowout on Friday. She regarded me with a furrowed brow. I assumed you would have known. He told Jason it was one you had found for him. I think he said his offer was accepted this weekend. Do you not ever see him? I shook my head because that was about all I could do. I worried that I'd cry if I attempted to form words, and if I did that, there was no way I'd be able to keep this secret from her. As much as I wanted to unload and just tell her everything, spill every buried thought, I couldn't. No matter how I felt about Aaron, he still deserved to be the first one to know the truth. That... And there was no way Tatum could keep it from Jason. And Jason would never keep it from Aaron. It's been hit or miss with him lately. More miss than hit. Though I hadn't complained until now, I was still angry with him. Well, angry wasn't the right word. Upset? Hurt? Those were much closer to how I felt about him. Yet anger was the emotion I projected. By any chance, do you happen to know which house it was that he bought? I've shown him a bunch. She hummed while keeping her eyes glued to the TV. It's on Relic Road. That's all I know. 
My heart sank at the thought of Aaron buying my favorite house. The one I'd imagined us in together. And he'd done this after what had gone down in my kitchen Friday night. Part of me thought he'd done it on purpose. But the rest of me wasn't stupid. He wouldn't have purchased a home just to spite me. He clearly didn't care enough about me to do that. I stayed for almost another hour before heading home. I told her I didn't want to be there when Jason got off, but in truth, I needed a few moments to myself before Aaron walked through the front door. If I didn't organize my thoughts, this would all blow up in my face. As luck would have it, I managed to word vomit in my journal before Aaron arrived. Doing so allowed me to zero in on what my real problem was so that I wouldn't accuse him of things he would never understand, such as purposely taking my favorite house to keep me from buying it. That wouldn't go over so well. Hey, I said almost too quietly when he walked in. He stilled with his eyes locked on mine, wide with fear, as if I'd just caught him sneaking in after curfew. And when he said, Hey, it was hesitant and forced, obvious that he didn't know how to respond. Do you have a few minutes to talk? Peace seemed to wash over him in that moment. It started with his eyes, softening them until I could recognize the man in front of me. The tension fell away from his shoulders, and the most relieved sigh filtered past his lips. He nodded and rasped. Yeah. We moved closer to one another me from the doorway to my room and him from the foyer, and met at the back corner of the couch. His eyes implored me to start the conversation off, so I did, just after I gulped down my own insecurities. I heard you bought a house. Why didn't you tell me? His gaze narrowed just slightly. I haven't really seen you to tell you. Oh, I whispered. It wasn't a bad excuse and one I probably could have come up with on my own. Well... I heard it's the one-off relic? The one I starred on the paper with the office in the front? Yeah, I remember. You noted it could be an office or a nursery. I nearly choked when I swallowed, hearing him mention a nursery. Yeah, that one. Why did you choose that house over any of the others? The easiness that he'd worn like a cape began to fall away. His spine stiffened as he stood rigid, his eyes hard and boring holes into my face, and when he spoke, his lips seemed tight, as if he had to hold himself back from saying something else. You think I had some ulterior motive for it? Like, I'd buy something that big for any other reason than I liked it and wanted it? I shrugged, because apparently I hadn't thought this through enough. No, that's not what I was getting at. I blew out a huff and dropped my chin, hoping that when I opened my eyes, I could start over. I just wanted to make sure you didn't jump the gun and make an offer simply to move out of here faster. I guess I took the whole thing more seriously after last week, but no. I didn't buy it just to get away from you. I've done that just fine without packing my bags. That was a punch straight to the heart. I nodded while searching for the other words I'd wanted to say. It seemed he'd knocked me off my axis and made me lose my balance. Well, when's closing? How much longer are you stuck with me? Four weeks from today, May 28th. And don't worry, I'll get out of your hair soon. You won't have to deal with me for that whole time. I just have to find somewhere to go in the meantime. Don't be ridiculous. I think we can deal with each other for another four weeks. He opened his mouth, but quickly closed it, obviously changing his mind on what he wanted to say. After pulling in a deep breath and briefly closing his eyes, he finally said, Thanks, Kelsey, but really you won't have to worry about it. And with that, he turned and headed for the room he occupied. I wanted to call out to him, beg him to come back, tell him everything I'd bottled up inside while screaming at him for breaking my heart. But I didn't do any of that. In fact, I didn't do anything, period. I stood there and watched him leave. Then I went to my room, where I cried into my pillow and unloaded my every emotion onto the pages of my leather-bound therapist. Chapter 16 Aaron 
If I hadn't already known I was a fool, this certainly proved it. I stood on the dance floor while some hot chick rubbed her body all over me. My hands were on her hips, my eyes set on her lips. Lips that promised to do bad, bad things to me. Things I wanted her to do, for no other reason than to get Kelsey out of my head. But my mind, well, that wasn't on her, or the things she did, or the things she wanted to do. No, my mind was on a certain redhead. More specifically, on the ache in my chest she'd caused. My place or yours? The woman in front of me asked with her lips to my ear so I could hear her over the music. I smiled as I grazed her cheek with the tip of my nose and then yanked her closer to my body, her earlobe between my teeth. But I loosened my hold knowing she'd take off running when I answered her question. Considering I don't have a place, I guess yours would be best. She didn't run, but she did push against my chest to stare into my eyes, confusion tugging her thin brows closer together. What do you mean, you don't have a place? My smile grew larger, proving my point that something was wrong with me. My parents kicked me out of their house, said I was too old to live with them anymore. Who does that? I mean, I'm only 32. I'm a spring chicken. This officially made me a masochist. Although I'm currently staying with a friend's younger cousin, we've slept together on occasion. I've told her I love her a couple of times, but she's mad at me right now because she caught me fucking my secretary, receptionist, whatever the hell she is. I don't even know. She's just Noel to me. Her husband's Pete, really great guy. They're trying to have a baby, but it's not working, so she thought I could help her out. Her eyes grew large, assumptions dancing in the light bouncing off them. And then she ran off. Exactly what I'd known she'd do. Then again, I hadn't made it difficult. I'd almost purposely made my life sound like a fiery train wreck. There would be others, though. As I sat at the bar, tipping my head back while gulping yet another beer, my next victim came to sit next to me. Where the last one was tall and leggy, this one was short and curvy. I was a lover of all types. Some guys were ass men. Others cared more about the bra size. Me? I loved every part of the female body, no matter the size, shape, or color. The only part of a woman's body I didn't particularly care about was her feet. And this specific lady had heels that hid her toes. Just the way I liked it. Wanna buy me a drink? Damn, she was bold. Wish I could, sweetheart, but I'm broke. You see, and she was gone. Go figure. You're wasting your time, Aaron. Good old Cheryl. Always coming at the right time to say the right thing when I needed it most. I've seen you with four women now, and you've struck out with each of them. Not saying that's out of your skill set or anything, but it's clear you're doing this on purpose. Why? Setting my beer down, I shrugged. I knew the answer, though I chose to keep it to myself. It seems I lost my game. She leaned against the bar to bring her face closer to mine and laughed. Aaron, I hate to break it to you, but you've never had game. I should know. You tried it on me. And it would have worked, too. You said so yourself. One brow arched high, matching the one corner of her quirked top lip. There was something she wasn't telling me, and she had five seconds to spit it out before I'd have to drag it out of her. Finally, she shook her head and dropped her gaze to the counter. It never would have worked. I thought you were a great guy. Still do, but you were too nice. That's your problem. You know that, right? Do I know what? I don't understand how being nice is a problem. No. She tucked her pink hair behind her ear and smiled sweetly at me. Being nice is good. Being too nice is where you go from a contender to a cheerleader. I still didn't understand. Luckily, Cheryl knew me well, noticing the confusion in my eyes or all over my face, though it was hard to tell without looking over her head into the giant mirror behind her. You're a great friend. And, at least for me, it was hard to see you as anything else because you were too nice. 
You want an asshole? No. But if you don't have at least some edge to you, then you kind of come off as weak. And no woman wants to sleep with someone they assume is weak. We want passion. To feel like a guy is crazy desperate for what we have. Nice guys don't give us that impression. All I could do was shrug and tip my bottle back again. She didn't know how I was in bed because she'd never given me a shot, much like the others. Assumptions made the world go round, and they made mine stop. So are you saying I need to be meaner? She laughed. Apparently she'd mistaken my question for a joke. I doubt you'll ever be able to pull that off, Aaron. I tipped my chin, taking her words as a challenge. One I'd totally win. Game on. Five or six beers later, I was back at the bar, though this time a different girl was next to me. By now, I'd lost track of how many I'd spoken to since taking Cheryl up on her dare. I just knew I'd land one eventually. She had her hand on my thigh, working her way closer to my crotch. Lust brightened her eyes, which appeared to be purple, but there was no way that could be, unless she wore contacts. In that case, it was totally possible for her eyes to be purple. It also made me question if she had a little extra in her bra, or if the long blonde hair that draped over her shoulders was real or attached by glue, or thread. I still didn't know how that worked, but I'd seen my share of fake hair. Either I'd had too much to drink, or I'd taken Cheryl's advice too literally, because when she smiled, I found myself saying, Your teeth are big. She pulled her head back and frowned. Excuse me? Every time you smile, it makes me wonder if you have any gum. Not chewing gum, but the kind that holds your teeth in your head. All I see are these big, chiclet-looking things. Nothing else. I bet you get that a lot, huh? No. Actually, I don't. A hum vibrated my lips as I nodded. You probably hang out with people who are too nice to tell you. I've heard the nice ones suck in bed, weak or some shit like that. But the mean ones, the ones who'll tell you that you have horse teeth, they'll rock your world. I'm not sure that's right. Want to test that theory out? I wagged my brows, a wide smile burning my cheeks. I deleted the Uber app from my phone, so it looks like you'll have to give me a ride. I leaned closer to her ear and added, Pun intended. Her hand vanished from my thigh as she pulled away, repulsion dripping from every pore while she regarded me with pinched features. I think I'll pass, but thanks for the, uh, the offer. Anytime, sweet cheeks. I nodded when she slipped off the stool to leave. She'll be back, I said to Cheryl, who'd watched the entire thing from her station behind the bar. I made sure to let her know just how good I was in bed. Yeah, you're a real rock star, Aaron. I had an epiphany. That's it. I could totally get laid if I said I was a rock star. Good thinking, Cheryl. Now, I just have to find someone willing to believe it. So you've resorted to lying? You know, I leaned forward as though I had a secret to share with her. Tatum says if you don't make all of it up, it's called a half-truth, not a lie. Sounds like she's got it all figured out. Go for it, Aaron. Let's see how that works for you. Cheryl didn't have much faith in me, but I'd show her. Right after I finished the beer she'd just placed in front of me with a telling smile lightening her eyes. Before I knew it, I was in a room somewhere inside the club. At least I assumed it was in the club, considering the music thumped through the walls and the couch I was horizontal on smelled like stale cigarette smoke. I'd lost count of how much I'd had to drink, but at some point I'd taken shots. Lots of shots. And just like they always said, beer before liquor, never been sicker. It was embarrassing. How are you feeling? Cheryl came into view when I peeked one eye open. Although, she was a little blurry, and there seemed to be two of her. Do you think you're going to throw up anymore? Or are you done? Done. 
That one word burned my throat, which had become raw with the bile that I'd started to believe would never end. For now. She giggled, and it made me wonder how she could stand being around drunk people all the time. I never enjoyed being the sober one in a group. I'd hate to have her job, though she seemed to like it. Things were a little fuzzy. I'm not sure what's real and what isn't, so tell me. Did I get laid? Cheryl sat me up and handed me yet another bottle of cold water. I was almost convinced you'd get her done with that last one, but unfortunately it just wasn't in your cards tonight. Maybe next time. You really mastered the art of asshole, though. I smiled, proud of myself for overcoming the stigma of the nice guy. So you think I would have gotten with that last chick if I hadn't thrown up? Her brows dipped, gaze narrowed. Uh, the vomiting didn't start until after she left. Luckily, no one but me saw that. Then why'd she leave? Gee, Aaron, it might have had something to do with you calling her Kelsey and telling her that you wanted her to have your babies. But I was mean about it, right? You sure were. When she corrected you for the sixth or seventh time that her name is Emily, not Kelsey, you told her you'd call her what you wanted, and if she didn't like it, she could... She covered her lips and ducked her head, stifling her laughter long enough to finish speaking. She could sprout wings and fly like a bird, far, far, far away from here. I stared at her, blinking, unsure why she couldn't stop laughing. I don't get it. She didn't either. I'm pretty sure she's too young because she didn't understand why you kept saying, Life is like a box of condoms. I thought it was clever. I laughed. She didn't. Clearly, considering she was still laughing. I leaned forward, pressing my elbows into my thighs while I cradled my head in my hands. I need to get out of here. Don't worry. I called someone to come pick you up. Dropping my hands, I stared at her. More like tried to stare at her since my vision was still off, but stared all the same. Who'd you call? Uber? I would have, but you deleted the app, and I couldn't get it reinstalled without your password. So I went through your contacts and found someone willing to get out of bed at one in the morning to come get your ass and take you home. Who? Oh, please say Jason. Kelsey? Wrong answer. She's on her way. Kill me now. Why the hell would you call her? Of all people, why her? I have, like, a lot of people in my phone. You had a lot of options to choose from. Are you trying to make my life worse? I thought we were friends. She took my hands in hers and drew herself closer. Compassion curled her lips and dimmed her eyes. It's obvious you came here tonight to drink away whatever issues you have with her. And it's not working. I don't have a clue what is going on or what's happened between the two of you, but I know it's big enough that it drove you here. The only way you'll be able to deal with it is if you talk to her. So yes, I called her because you live with her, and she's the best person to get you home safely. But also, because there's clearly something you need to get off your chest. And she's the only one you should talk to about it. Not strangers at a bar, not an empty beer bottle or shot glass. Her. Just then, someone cleared their throat and caught our attention, drawing my focus from Cheryl's fuzzy face to the redhead near the office door. Double vision still troubled me, though I could see enough to notice the confusion on her taut brow. As I lowered my gaze, I became aware of the flowing tank draping over her perky breasts, the yoga pants accentuating her legs, and her flip-flops, which showed off the dark polish on her toenails. I'd rubbed those feet countless times, always contemplating if she wore black or some really dark shade on the perfectly manicured nails. What color is that? I pointed to her toes without a care in the world that I likely made no sense to anyone. The question was out of the blue, but then again, I was drunk off my ass, so I didn't give a shit. Is it black? Kelsey's toes wiggled and I could picture her staring down at her feet, though I never glanced up to verify if she was or not. Instead, I kept my attention on the polish and awaited her response. A second later, I heard, Yeah, it's black. I sucked in a lungful of air and pushed to my feet, meeting her eyes for the first time since realizing she was here. 
Good choice. Matches your heart. Passing her, I added, Let's go. Murmurs cascaded behind me, though I refused to turn around to see Cheryl and Kelsey talking, and I certainly didn't bother waiting around to find out what they had to say. I'd gone from hopeless to hopeful, to drunk to sick, and now to angry, all within a few hours. I was beyond ready for this night to be over. You could show a little more gratitude, you know. I didn't have to drag myself out of bed to come pick you up, so it'd be nice if you didn't act like me driving you home as a prison sentence. Kelsey called out as she followed me into the parking lot. I had no idea where I was going, considering I didn't have a clue where she'd parked. I could have scoured the lot for her car, but that would have required focus and single vision. Currently, I was too busy fuming over Kelsey being here to pay any attention to anything around me. Oh, and my eyesight rivaled that of an elderly man with cataracts and glaucoma. I turned around to face her, telling by the sounds of her steps that she wasn't far behind. I only meant to pivot on my foot, yet I likely resembled a ballerina with the way I spun, nearly losing my balance. Maybe I don't want you to drive me home. Too late. I'm already here. By now, we were face to face. Couldn't have been more than a foot separating us. Anger fueled our fight, though betrayal burned in my veins, igniting more than an argument. Resentment kindled within me until my breaths were labored and ragged. Why are you so mad? She held up a hand and shook her head, keeping me from responding. You know what? I don't care. Be pissed. Throw a temper tantrum until you're blue in the face. I don't have the time or patience to deal with it. For a 32-year-old, you certainly don't act like a man. You're acting far more like a little boy who didn't get his way. Find your own ride home, and don't wake me up when you get there. I wouldn't let her get away with this that easily. So when she turned to walk off, I followed. Every step she took, I matched with my own until I was a breath away, suffocating in the scent wafting off her clean hair. For your information... No, I wasn't aware at the time how my choice of words proved her right about the way I was acting. I came here to forget about you. So excuse me if I'm pissed that the one person I wanted to block out of my mind is here to drive me home. She stopped suddenly, nearly causing me to run into her back. Shifting on her heel, her body only slightly angled toward me. She peered at me, as though studying my expression or attempting to read my mind. Why were you trying to forget about me? What did I do to you other than prevent you from doing to me what my ex did? It seemed I'd never be able to escape the assumptions, the preconceived notions that took on a life of their own. No matter who it was, what it was about, they'd always be there. They were my skeletons in the closet, inescapable, always there, hiding in the dark corners, waiting to take me down every time I thought I was about to move forward. I'm so hung up on you, and you can't even see it because you're too hung up on what someone else did to you. You say you want a good guy. I held my arms out and leaned my chest forward. But you wouldn't recognize one if they stood right in front of you with a sign around their neck. If you'd stop looking behind you, stop focusing on what he did, and turn to look at what's ahead, you'd see it. I'm right here. I'm constantly turned down for being the nice guy, yet you, someone who might actually want that in a person, dismisses me because you can't accept the fact that there just might be a guy out there who doesn't want to fuck you over. Without a word, she dropped her gaze, shuffled her feet, and continued to make her way toward her car. Or at least I assumed that was where she was headed. I didn't really know, though I doubted she'd wander through a parking lot at night for any other reason, and her pajamas no less. Tail lights flashed ahead of us after Kelsey pressed a button on her key fob. She went to the left, making a beeline to the driver's side while I made my way to the passenger seat. As soon as we were both in, doors closed, all outside noise blocked out, she muttered. I know what I saw, Aaron. I know what I heard. She cranked the engine and turned toward me while pulling the seatbelt across her chest. It doesn't matter what you say. You won't convince me that I'm wrong about you. I wasn't even there. The truth burned the back of my throat so badly I wasn't able to keep it in any longer. 
Defending myself had never been something I'd bothered with. It was pointless to prove someone wrong when they never gave me the benefit of the doubt to begin with. I was at the hospital, evaluating a patient in the ER. I'm sure there are lots of people who can confirm that if you don't believe me. She drove in silence, keeping her thoughts and arguments to herself, likely waiting until I finished speaking so she could metaphorically hang me with what she presumed to be a lie. Little did she know, the noose actually hung around her neck, not mine. You know what? I don't give a shit if you believe me or not. You're the same as everyone else. You see something, hear something, and without taking a second to question it, you make assumptions. No one ever assumes I've got a big dick or that I can make a woman come like no other. They don't assume I'm capable of loving someone with my entire heart, giving my all to one person. No. They hear my name and conjure up an image of me performing brain surgery only to think less of me when they discover the truth. They hear me admit that I lived with my parents and then run before they can learn why. You hear someone having sex in my office and you automatically slam the gavel without once recognizing that not everything is as it seems. Her hands grew tighter around the steering wheel. It was obvious she had a lot to say, but she wouldn't get a chance until I was done. I told you Noel was married. But since one guy fucked you over, lied to you about who he was, cheated on his wife with you, the only conclusion your brain could come up with was that she had to be cheating on her husband with me. I quit speaking, hoping she'd take the stage and fight back. I needed a fight. I needed her rampage. The amount of resentment that burned within me would be catastrophic if I didn't find an outlet for it. As much as I hated to admit it, I needed her to make this pain go away. Kelsey cleared her throat, though she never turned my way. Instead, she kept her attention on the road ahead while lacerating me with her sharp words. The only reason I stopped on my way home was because your truck was in the parking lot. Two people were having sex in your office. If it quacks like a duck... Have you ever heard a duck call? She stilled for a moment, but then said... A what? It's a whistle that hunters use to lure game birds. When they hear it, they come closer, not realizing they're about to be shot and killed. Likely someone's next meal. It quacks like a duck. But it's not a duck. I turned my head toward her, making sure she didn't miss the meaning of my next words. Assumptions can be dangerous. Thank God for TV. Anyone who said reality shows were ruining our culture was wrong. Then why was your truck there? She asked, her words thick in her throat. I couldn't get it to start, so I took Noelle's car to the hospital. She had her husband pick her up from work. This all happened the day after Jason's dinner announcement, right? The day after we slept together? Still, without taking her eyes off the road, she nodded. Do you by chance remember that I came home late? Around eight o'clock, I think. Do you recall that I walked in with my sleeves rolled up, my hands greasy? Probably not. You were too busy stewing on the couch. Anyway, that's because I stopped to change the battery after leaving the hospital. I returned Noel's car and drove my truck back to the apartment. I wasn't there. Nothing more was said for the next three minutes. But when she pulled into the parking lot, she remained behind the steering wheel, the engine still running. It seems she had something to say, maybe had to work her way up to speaking the words aloud. Yet I didn't wait around for it. She was a week too late. Instead, I climbed out of the car, closed the door, and left her behind. I might not have successfully pushed her from my mind, but with time, I would. Chapter 17, Kelsey. When I was in fourth grade, my teacher had shown us all a picture. She'd kept it on the screen for 60 seconds, not telling us what it was or why it was up there. After taking it down, she'd gone back to her desk, ignoring the class for two full minutes. She didn't tell anyone to stop talking or even give directions about what we needed to do. After those two minutes were up, twice as long as the picture had been on the screen... She moved to the front of the class and asked us all to get out a piece of paper. On that paper, 
We had to describe what we'd seen, using adjectives to draw the image she'd shown us a couple of minutes before. I'd felt confident I was right. Beyond right. And as my classmates had read their assignments out loud, I had become more and more impatient for my turn, knowing how pleased my teacher would be at the details I'd remembered. The parts of the image no one else had mentioned, or that they'd gotten wrong. The woman had worn a green dress with feathers along the bottom and black shoes with silver buckles, her purse clutched in one hand while she held on to a child with the other. The little boy, a towhead, squatted at the woman's feet, petting the belly of a beige-colored dog. No one had mentioned these things, and I couldn't wait to be praised for my memory, my perception, my incredible attention to detail. I'd never forget it, the way all the other kids had stared at me as I read my assignment out loud. When I finished, several of them had called out rebuttals, arguing with me about how I had gotten things wrong. But I knew I hadn't. I knew that out of the entire class, I had been the only one who'd gotten it all right. Until our teacher filled the screen with the image again. Her dress hadn't been green, but blue. And there were no feathers at the bottom of the long skirt. It was snow piled around her feet. The silver buckles on her black shoes had turned out to be light, reflecting off pieces of ice that sat upon two small rocks. She held onto a purse, yes. But the little boy turned out to be a little girl, a bonnet on her head. The dog wasn't a dog at all. In fact, it wasn't even an animal. Just more snow. I'd been so sure of myself only to have it all come crashing down with one more glance at the same picture. Last night had been a reenactment of that day in fourth grade, and as I lay in bed, exhausted from a long night, I couldn't help but compare the two different yet similar situations, once again baffled at how I had been so wrong when I'd felt so sure. Yes, his truck had been in the parking lot. And yes, there were two people having sex in his office. However, I hadn't seen him, only assumed it was him based on what I knew and heard. But when I stopped and thought about it, thought about what had been said, the voices, the words, the tone, it became rather obvious that it hadn't been Aaron in that room. I'd always thought Aaron had a rather normal voice for a guy deep and manly without the burly gruffness that came with super deep baritones. The man in his office had grit, like his words had been dragged along a gravel road as he spoke. Even though I'd only had sex with Aaron twice, I couldn't ever forget the way he sounded in the heat of the moment, during both rough and sensual times. His voice became hoarser the closer he got to his orgasm. And when I came, he growled. The sounds... What I'd heard in his office that day, and what I knew of Aaron during sex, weren't even close to the same. Also, Aaron had told me he loved me. He'd said those exact words to me a few times. Granted, he'd been pretending I was someone else, but that didn't mean I was deaf to what that sentiment sounded like falling from his lips while in the throes of passion. And as I thought back to how the man in his office had sounded, as he told Noelle he loved her... I realized it was a far cry from the strong, powerful way Aaron had spoken those words to me. I dragged myself out of bed, knowing there was a lot I had to make up for and with no idea where to begin. Glancing at the clock on my nightstand, I noticed it was just after eight. With how intoxicated Aaron had been last night, I figured he'd still be in bed. So I took a quick shower, threw on the first outfit I pulled from my closet, and went to him only to be gutted at the side of his empty room. I was too late. I'd woken that morning with a sliver of hope on the horizon, and I rested my head on my pillow that night in total darkness. No sliver of anything, just an invisible weight that wouldn't relent. And the later it got, the heavier the weight became until it was crushing. I'd stayed up all day and all night waiting for Aaron to come home. In the end, the sun rose, yet he never came. My phone buzzed from the coffee table, but I was too scared to look at it. 
Aaron had pretty much been gone for the last five days, so I'd sent him a text a few minutes ago asking if he'd be at the apartment tonight. This was probably his response, but I was no longer sure I wanted to see it. If he said yes, that meant I'd have to come clean, tell him the truth about the baby. I'd gone to my 12-week appointment today, and in a few days, I'd officially be in the second trimester. I couldn't keep this from my family or Aaron any longer. However, if he said no, my world just might crumble at my feet. He'd barely been home since I'd been dragged out of bed at one in the morning to pick him up from Boots. He'd left the next morning before I got up and hadn't come back for more than a change of clothes since. I'd stupidly thought he'd come back tonight, at the very least to take a shower like he had the last two nights before leaving and sleeping somewhere else. Yet it was almost nine and he hadn't come home. I didn't want to think about where he'd been staying. I already knew it hadn't been at Tatum and Jason's, and the only other friend of his I knew of was some chick who worked at the bar. I didn't have a clue how to get a hold of her, considering she'd called me last week from Aaron's phone. Giving in, I grabbed my phone to read his text. Aaron, no. My heart sank. It wasn't until that exact moment that I realized how badly I'd screwed this up. I didn't want to tell anyone else until Aaron knew, but he wasn't making it easy on me. My plan was to announce my pregnancy on Sunday at my parents' house, which meant I had about two days to let Aaron know, and I refused to give him that news in a text. Me. We really need to talk. When will you be home? Not sure. His response had been almost immediate, which made me wonder if he had his phone in his hand, possibly waiting for me to reply. That also made me wonder where he'd be or who he'd be with, that he would rather stare at his phone than entertain someone else. Logic told me he wasn't alone. Experience told me he was with a woman. Where are you? Again, his response was instant. Doesn't matter. Can you come over tomorrow, please? I don't get the keys to my place for another 19 days. As irrational as it was, reading those words hurt. My apartment had always been mine. Except when Tatum was here. And his stay had always been temporary. I'd never referred to it as his home, nor had he ever called it his place. It had always been mine. So it shouldn't have bothered me that he refused to acknowledge this as his home. Yet it did. I took a deep breath and moved on. It was the only option I had left. I couldn't dwell. I refused to dwell. Are you alone? No. We need to talk. Okay, so talk. I should have known he wouldn't make this easy on me. But then again, I didn't blame him. Things had been good with us. We'd found a comfort level between us, and as soon as we'd gotten to a place where we might have actually stood a chance to move forward, I'd fucked it up. Needless to say, I didn't text him back, and he never pushed. By eleven, I'd given up on sleeping. Tossing and turning didn't equate to slumber, so I got out of bed and did yoga. And by did yoga, I mean I paced while eating ice cream straight from the carton with the scoop. The only reason I stopped and put it away was because it had started to melt and drip down my arm. And as I stood in front of the sink, rinsing off the rocky road that made my fingers stick together, I realized something. Something that shouldn't have taken me this long to figure out. Apparently, while I could learn a lesson, it didn't stick with me for long. I think I'm going to throw up, I said after Tatum answered the phone. I had her on Bluetooth as I drove over the bridge to Aaron's office. You woke me up to tell me that. Unless you are throwing up, it's not considered an emergency. She no longer sounded sleepy. And even then, it's only a cause for concern if it's bloody or something. Or black. I don't think black vomit is healthy. And that was why I'd called her, even knowing I'd wake her up. In a crisis, Tatum could always make me laugh. And even though I only had a slight curve to my lips now, that was all I needed to keep me sane. I'm on my way to tell him about the baby. She was silent, not even her breathing audible through the line. Then there was a bit of rustling, a door closing, and her echoing voice as she asked, What? Like right now? It was clear she was in the bathroom, 
As if that wouldn't raise suspicion if Jason woke up. Yes, right now. Why? Did something happen at your appointment today? Is the baby all right? I moved one hand from the steering wheel and held it against my softening belly. I still wasn't showing, which was a good thing. But my body had definitely changed. I wouldn't be able to go much longer before people would just know. The baby is fine. I've decided to tell my parents on Sunday before everyone gets there. And if I'm going to do that, then it's only fair he knows first. I tried to get him to come over earlier, but he was being an ass. So I'm going to him. It's almost midnight. On a Thursday. Don't most people have jobs they have to go to in the morning? Won't he be asleep? She sighed, keeping me from answering. Never mind. I forgot he's a stripper. I chose to ignore that. Any hooter. I'm freaking out. Don't. It'll be fine. Just spit it out and get it over with. If you think about it, it worked out for the best that he didn't go to your place. I mean, imagine having to kick him out after telling him. At least this way you can leave as soon as those words are out of your mouth. Her optimism made me feel better. So you're going to tell everyone on Sunday? No, just my parents. Before everyone gets there. Which means Jason still won't know. Defeat rolled through her voice like thunder through the clouds. Can you just tell me when everyone will find out? I don't want to say something thinking that the cat's out of the bag just to find out it's only out of the bag to, like, one person. She was tired of keeping this from Jason. I didn't have to read her mind to know that, and I understood the predicament she was in. Soon. Once this guy knows and I can talk to my parents in private, then you can say anything you want. Deal? A soft squeal leaked through the line. So, Sunday? Yes, Sunday. My laugh was genuine, and the smile on my lips burned my cheeks. But I'm about five minutes away from him, and I think I need to get my head in the game. Shit. I still don't even know what to say. Let the freak out commence. It's easy. All you have to do is say, I'm having your baby, and leave. Good thinking. I shook my head, amusement still dancing on my lips. Where would I be without you, Tater? Lost. Her soft giggle flooded my ear just before we said our goodbyes. And then it was just me, and the road, on the way to Aaron's office, where I found his truck in the parking lot. The otherwise empty parking lot. And through the slats on the closed blinds, I could see slivers of light from inside. Why it had taken me almost a week to realize where he'd been sleeping was beyond me. My heart hammered with each step I took, my throat constricting further the closer I got to the door. And as I raised my hand to knock, my head grew so light I worried I'd float away like a balloon. Somehow between the car and the front door, I'd developed vertigo and I was on the verge of falling over when movement from the window next to the door caught my attention. I must have knocked, though I didn't recall doing so. Either way, someone had separated the blinds to peek out. And after several long seconds, the door opened. Aaron stood in front of me in gym shorts, nothing covering his intoxicating chest. He'd always worn shirts around the apartment. The only times he hadn't were when he was in my bed. It was a glorious sight. Until I made my way to his face and noticed the scowl. What are you doing here, Kelsey? His voice was hard and sharp, capable of holding me down and cutting into me like a scalpel. I told you. We need to talk. How'd you know where to find me? I stepped closer to him and placed my hand on his chest. His heart raced beneath my palm. His body heat seeped through my pores until flames licked just beneath my skin. But what got to me more than anything else was the combination of pain and hope in his tired eyes. Well, the obvious guess would be that you've been staying with a girl, or more than one. And once I stopped looking at the obvious, I wasn't left with many options. Using his shock to my advantage, I leaned even farther forward until I could fit through the door and into the office. But I wasn't prepared for what I'd find. What the... Can we not do this right now? I stared at the blow-up mattress in the middle of the waiting room, chairs pushed aside to make room for his mock bedroom. Why are you sleeping on the floor of your office? I asked, peering at him from over my shoulder. At the very least, 
I'd expected him to have a couch or something more than this. He slowly closed the door and turned to face me, chin tucked and gaze downcast. But with a sharp breath, he returned to his normal height, with his shoulders back and eyes boring holes into mine. Where else was I supposed to go? You made it clear you didn't want me at your place. I specifically told you to stay until you closed on the house. Why would you say I didn't want you to if I'd told you to? He shook his head and laughed, though not with humor. Telling someone to stay out of pity is not the same as wanting them there. I'm not going to be where I'm not wanted, Kelsey. Fine, I get it. But I asked you to come home tonight. Doesn't that mean I want you there? To talk. And to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure I want to hear what you have to say. I heard enough last week. I don't know how much more I can take coming from you. It took me a minute to speak, his words bombarding me on repeat in my mind. And when I finally found my voice, the softness surprised us both. What do you mean? Coming from me? It doesn't matter. I grabbed his wrist to keep him from moving away. No, it does matter, Aaron. What did you mean? Don't hold back now. You were different. At least, I thought you were. I had fun with you, and I didn't feel like I had to be someone else. Whether we were sharing ice cream or just hanging out watching TV, your feet in my lap. It felt natural, easy. Maybe it was too easy. Maybe that's what was wrong, and it's my fault because I didn't see it from the beginning. I thought we were getting somewhere. And then you did exactly what everyone else does. You assumed the worst without once giving me the benefit of the doubt. I heard every word, but there were certain parts that stuck out more than others. And until those were addressed, I wouldn't be able to move forward. You thought we were getting somewhere. Where did you think we were going? I don't know, Kelsey. I honestly don't. It could have been a really strong friendship. Closer than a friend, but not as close as a lover. Or maybe more. I couldn't tell you because you shut me out too soon. All I know is something seemed to change that night, after we got home from dinner with your family. But before I had a chance to dig deeper into my feelings toward you, you accused me of... Hell, I don't even know what you accused me of. Cheating? Lying? What was it exactly? I slid my hands along his warm skin, up his arms, over his shoulders, linking my fingers behind his neck and held him still, until he saw the truth in my eyes. I felt the same way, Aaron. That's why I came here that day. To talk to you about us, and what was ahead. What I heard in your office killed me. No, I never should have assumed. I saw your truck, I heard what was going on in there, and I didn't bother to discuss it with you. I'm sorry. I allowed my emotions to get the best of me, and I hate how that affected you. Is that what you wanted to talk about? I swallowed, suddenly feeling nervous and incapable of speaking. I'd come here to tell him about the baby, but that was before I saw the sleeping quarters he'd set up in his waiting room. I'd thought he had been staying here, but apparently thinking it and seeing it were two very different things. Because now that it was more than an idea in my mind, and now that I'd witnessed the warring emotions in his eyes, everything changed. I cupped his cheeks and brought his lips closer to mine. Thankfully, he didn't object. I wanted to tell you that I'm sorry. I didn't mean to let you down or hurt you. I shouldn't have let my own feelings dictate how you were treated. That's just it, Kelsey. Had you come to me then, I could have explained. He grabbed my hips and pulled me closer. Had you called me, you would have known I wasn't at the office. I could have put those hurt feelings to rest right then and there, long before now. Is it too late? He took so long to answer that I worried I'd passed out from holding my breath. But he breathed life back into me when he said, No, it's not too late. My lips met his. Urgency and need spilled between us like molten lava, burning their way through my veins. I couldn't keep my hands off him, couldn't dig my nails into his shoulders any harder, and no matter what I did, I couldn't slow my racing heart, my labored breathing, or the desire that pulsed between my legs. I needed him, and based on the pressure against my lower stomach, he needed me, too. 
but just as I thought we'd explode with untamed desire. He pulled away, breaking the kiss. He didn't let go of my hips or put distance between our bodies. Instead, he dropped his forehead to mine and said, I want to be with you tonight, Kelsey. Then be with me. No. Not only did he drop one hand from my side, but he pulled his face away. Granted, he then used his free hand to cradle my cheek, which was enough to calm my nerves. I mean, no pretending, no make-believe. I want to be with you tonight. Without the act, without the fantasies. Can you do that? Can you just be with me as we are? God, I thought I was about to climb this man like a ladder. Standing on my tiptoes, I tightened my arms around the back of his neck and pressed my chest to him. Our mouths so close, his breath kept me alive like an oxygen mask. I don't want anything else. Only you and me. That was all he allowed me to say before grabbing the backs of my thighs and lifting me off the floor. In one dizzying sweep, I was on the air mattress and Aaron was above me. A flash of worry crossed my mind, hoping we hadn't popped the bed. But when nothing happened other than his lips claiming mine, I promptly forgot about anything other than Aaron's hands, his mouth, his tongue. The only thing that existed was him. And then he loved my body in a way no other man had before. He didn't take charge like he had the first time, though he maintained control over every move, his and mine. Nor did he make love to me like he had a few weeks ago. Yet that didn't mean he didn't make me feel loved, cherished, taken care of like I was the only thing in his world that mattered. He told me everything I needed to know with his mouth, just not with words and he used his hands to show me everything I wanted to know. There wasn't a single part of me, inside or out, that he didn't reach. And when he dragged me off the cliff, I could see my whole future. I saw him. I saw our baby. Our whole life stretched out in front of me, waiting for me to take hold of it and secure it close to my chest. The one thing he didn't give me, Something he'd offered both times before was his profession of love as he followed me over the ledge. Though I didn't doubt for a second that it was there, he just didn't utter the words. Then, afterward, he wrapped me in his arms and held on to me while I fell asleep in the most peaceful sleep I'd had in a long time. Chapter 18 Aaron why is your alarm going off so early? There was nothing sexier than Kelsey's voice first thing in the morning. She rolled off my chest and groaned. The sun's not even up yet, Aaron. It might have been early, but that didn't stop me from laughing while silencing the alarm on my phone. I need time to deflate my bed, get it stored in my truck, and put everything in here back where it was. And that has to be done before I go to the gym so I can take a shower and get ready for work. That way, by the time I get back to the office, Noel won't have a clue that I've been sleeping here. Kelsey curled along my side, her palm pressed against the center of my chest. Come home today, please. You still have about two more weeks before you close on your house. You shouldn't be sleeping here. Running my fingers through her hair, I stared at the dark ceiling and contemplated my response. If I do, where would I sleep? Airy confusion filled her voice when she asked. What do you mean? Well, I've now spent two nights sleeping next to you. And after last night, I don't think I'd make it a whole night in a separate bed, let alone a separate room. She tilted her head back and lifted her hand to cup my cheek. Gently directing me until I turned my face toward hers. Are you saying you'd want to stay in my room with me? I wish there was more light in this room right about now. Why? So I can see your eyes? If I only go by your voice, you sound freaked out. And I don't want to freak you out. I want you to be sure of whatever decision we make. After last night, I guess I assumed this was something you were ready for. Wanted, at least. Letting go of my cheek, Kelsey wrapped her fingers around my wrist and brought my palm to her face. 
After a moment of molding my touch to her features, she released a breath and said, Do you really want to sleep in my bed? With me? Every night until you get the keys to your own place? Fuck it. I pushed up on my elbow and dropped my forehead to hers, our lips a breath apart. My fingers spread across her cheek as if to keep her face close to mine. If I had my way, you'd come with me in two weeks. But I understand if this is too soon or too fast for you. I'll go as slow as you want, Kelsey. You tell me what you're comfortable with, and I'll follow. I don't want to scare you off. She didn't respond. Instead, she covered my mouth with hers and pulled my body between her parted legs. I really didn't have time to slide into her, but I couldn't find the strength to deny her. In the end, we both got what we wanted. Unfortunately, I had to all but kick her out of the office so I could get everything picked up and put back and then leave before Noelle showed up. The only thing that made it better was knowing I'd see her after work. But then I moved the blankets out of the way to deflate the mattress. Kelsey had left her phone. I quickly checked the parking lot in case she hadn't left yet, but her car was no longer there. My thumb must have accidentally hit one of the buttons on her cell and turned the screen on. Normally, I wouldn't have even looked, but the excessive texts from Tatum caught my attention. If she'd tried to get a hold of Kelsey that many times, I worried something was wrong. And with her being pregnant, I became even more worried, especially when I happened to see the word baby on the screen. It wasn't about Tatum's baby, although something was definitely wrong. Tater salad. I haven't been able to go back to sleep thanks to you. Are you still with him? Tater salad. Seriously, Kells? It's been almost an hour. How long does it take to say I'm having your baby? Tater salad. Fine. I'm going back to sleep. Text me in the morning. As I held the phone in my hand, it began to vibrate with more texts. Tater salad. I'm getting concerned. If you're missing, the only thing I know about him is he's a stripper. That won't give the cops much to go by. Text me back. Tater salad. Or call me. That's even better. The room spun and tilted around me. My knees grew weak. The temperature in the room rose about ten degrees until beads of sweat ran down the back of my neck. My stomach twisted into knots, bile rising in my throat. If this was true, if Kelsey was pregnant with my baby, this was not the way I would have wanted to find out. And the more I thought about that, the more I worried that I'd gotten it all wrong, that she wasn't pregnant with my baby. In which case, the thought of her having another man's baby made me sick. I wanted to assume it was mine, if she truly was pregnant. But I knew exactly what happened when assumptions were made with only pieces of information. And as much as I wanted to be happy about the prospect of this being real, I really didn't care for the destruction of my hopes if it wasn't. There were too many questions floating around in my head and no one here to answer them. Not to mention I had no way of getting a hold of Kelsey to even ask. The only thing I could do was go about my day and wait for her to show up looking for her phone. By some small miracle, I managed to get the waiting room put back to normal, stuff the blow-up mattress and bedding into my truck, and make it to the gym before Noelle pulled into the parking lot. But through it all, I couldn't get my thoughts to switch to anything else. I was in a perpetual tunnel that did nothing but echo Tatum's texts all around me. I felt like I was drowning, the world closing in on me. There was only one thing I could do. Twenty minutes later, I pulled into the parking lot of Kelsey's apartment and noticed her getting into her car. She didn't see me, so I parked my truck behind her, blocking her in. I needed to keep her from leaving before she told me everything. As soon as she saw me with her phone in my hand, her shoulders dropped, relief flooding her posture. I was just about to head over to your office to see if I left it there. I didn't even remember taking it inside with me, so that was the last place I thought to check. Thank you so much for bringing it over, but you didn't have to. I could have come to get it. Without a word, I handed her the device and then carefully watched her expression as the next few moments played out. Rather than look at the screen, she moved closer and tilted her head back, silently requesting my lips. But I wouldn't give them to her until I had answers. Until I could breathe again. 
and the only way that would happen was if I heard her tell me the news and then explain everything to me. Most importantly, I wanted to make sure that her visit last night had been sincere. If she'd only come to tell me about the baby, I needed to understand why she had changed her mind and slept with me instead. I cradled her cheek in my palm, running my thumb in soothing strokes along her porcelain skin. Tatum texted you several times. I think she's worried about you. You should probably let her know that you're okay. That the stripper who knocked you up didn't kill you after you told him the news. Her hazel eyes widened, darkened, matching the shock and fear that was written all over her face. Panic filled the gasp that escaped her quivering lips. Anxiety brightened her cheeks until they were a cherry red, just a hint at the fire flooding her system while she stood there, staring at me like I were a ghost. She took a step backward and dropped her attention to the device in her hand. Her body shivered as she attempted to unlock the cell to read the messages. And the entire time she did that... I just stood there and watched, reading her expressions and body language. Aaron, she whispered, lifting her glassy eyes to mine after pulling up Tatum's messages. I don't know what to say. The truth is a pretty good place to start. She nodded, and then stared at the ground for a moment, pulling herself together. When her eyes met mine again, fear danced in the dark outer edges of the irises while hope blossomed in the golden striations. Are you pregnant? I hoped I could move this conversation along. Yes, she answered with a slow, almost uncomfortable nod. Am... Am I the father? Yes, but just hear me out. Warmth spread through my body, starting in my chest and ending in my fingertips and toes. My face flushed, and I wasn't sure I'd be able to get through the rest of this without sweeping her off her feet and carrying her inside to kiss away her nerves and assure her that everything would be okay. But somehow I managed to steel myself long enough to gently catch her chin between my thumb and forefinger. I'm here to listen to you, Kelsey. I didn't come to confront you. I'm just really confused why you didn't tell me last night. I wanted to. That's what I had planned to talk to you about. But once we finally got in the same room and we weren't yelling at one another... I just wanted to be with you, Aaron. I didn't want you to think it was only because of the baby. So I figured we could have our night together and then I could tell you when you got home today. Who all knows? Just hate him. I plan to tell my parents this weekend, but I wanted to tell you first. I lowered my hand from her chin to her neck, tracing the dip in her clavicle with my thumb. Her gravitational pull was too much to resist, and honestly, I didn't want to. I sucked in a deep breath and pressed my lips to hers. Soft at first, then harder, claiming her, reminding her of how good we were together. And once I felt satisfied that she'd gotten the hint, I broke the kiss, resting my forehead on hers. I appreciate that you wanted me to know before your family. And I understand why you didn't tell me last night. I just wish I hadn't found out from anyone but you. I would have rather it had been you who told me. But I know it's not your fault. Her breath rushed out at the same time she tucked her face into the crook of my neck and gripped the sides of my shirt. I'm so sorry, Aaron. I really wanted to be the one to tell you. It's just been so hard with you moving in and everything being up in the air. Then the whole Noel thing and you leaving. I just kept waiting for the right time and the longer it went on, the harder it became to tell you. The whole world stopped spinning and I froze. Not a single muscle in my body working properly. My arms dangled by my sides, and my hands balled into fists, all while Kelsey curled into me, expecting support, comfort, acceptance. Hell, I had no idea what she sought from me, because I couldn't think past the words she'd just uttered to even consider what she needed. How long have you known? My mind whirled. It didn't make any sense. We had sex a little less than a month ago, so my moving in shouldn't have had anything to do with it. 
More questions hit me, almost knocking me off my feet. And how could you have possibly known the next day when you came to my office, when you found Noelle and her husband having sex? She cleared her throat and pulled away, just enough to peer up at me without taking a step back. I found out right before the wedding. The bachelorette party. Our first night together. So you've been pregnant for... over two months? Heat flamed my face, and no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't keep the anger from reaching my voice. And you never told me? You've known this whole time, and you never said anything to me? We've spent almost every evening together for weeks, weeks, Kelsey. I didn't know it was you at the time, Aaron. All I knew was that I'd slept with a stripper, woke up the next morning with a condom wrapper stuck to my face, and bits and pieces of our night together floating around in my head. And when I called the entertainment company I'd used to hire the stripper, they told me that he never showed up. At that time, I didn't have a clue who I had slept with. I didn't have a clue who the father of my child was. Okay, fine. I get why you didn't say anything when you first found out. But you knew it was me the night of the rehearsal. You've had plenty of time and opportunities to come clean. Why haven't you? She shrugged. She fucking shrugged, as if this weren't a big deal. As if keeping me in the dark for nearly two months about being a father was no different than forgetting to mention that a telemarketer had called looking for me. I retreated one step, then two, shaking my head. Full of pain and anger and disappointment. Heavy with betrayal and resentment. Looking at her now, I almost didn't recognize her. This wasn't the same person I'd spent those last seven weeks with. The one I'd shared evenings on the couch with. This wasn't the girl I'd dreamed about being with. I tried. Several times. Oh yeah? When, Kelsey? When did you try to tell me? And what stopped you? Tears welled in her eyes. And as soon as she spoke, the pain ran free, flowing in rivers down her cheeks and flooding her voice with unfeigned agony. The night of the wedding... When you came to the lobby and we sat on the bench to talk, I tried to say it then, but you kept cutting me off. And again later that night, when you came to my room, you told me to just forget it had happened. And you couldn't have found any other opportunity to mention the fact that I'm going to be a dad? That you and I were having a baby together? I froze, a lump in my throat threatening to silence me forever. Were you... Did you? Did I what? I cleared my throat and fisted my hands. Were you planning on getting rid of it? No, Aaron. That never crossed my mind. Then I just don't understand why you've kept it a secret. It's not like we haven't gotten along or spent any time together. I could see you not wanting to tell me if I was an asshole to you. But I wasn't. What more did you want from me? Betrayal ate away at me from the inside out like a parasite that wouldn't relent until every ounce of me had rotted away. I was worried about how you'd react. And since we were living together, I figured it'd be best if I waited until after you moved out. That way, if you didn't take the news well, I wouldn't have to see you every day. Then we slept together again. And I thought... Maybe this could work. Maybe we could be something. You acted like you wanted that. But then the next day happened. I thought I had heard you tell Noel that you loved her. How was I supposed to say something then? I felt like a fool. My heart wanted to relate to her. Wanted to understand how hard it must have been for her to hold on to this for so long. But I couldn't. While my heart wanted to accept her reasons, it was far too broken to win the war against my mind. The part of me that wanted to turn away from her, from the betrayal she'd delivered. So that's what I did. In the end, my mind won, and I left. I didn't bother to look in my rearview mirror to see her standing exactly where I'd left her. 
And as the day went on, I didn't care to reach out to her, didn't care to see how she was or try to talk about anything. Noelle asked me several times if I was all right, and each time I dismissed her concern. It was unlike me, and she knew it. I'd always been a happy, fun-loving guy, even when things were tough or I had something on my mind, so the fact that I didn't care to share anything with her was a big red flag, one she clearly noticed. Listen, if you don't want to talk about it, I won't make you. It's obvious that whatever has you down is a big deal. I just want you to know that I'm here if you need advice or just a listening ear. Noelle had always been like a kid sister to me, except I could share private, personal things with her without the disgust of actually being siblings. Leaning on her for advice, especially advice on women, had become a regular occurrence. I doubted I'd be able to talk to her about this just yet. I still hadn't processed it, and until I did that, there wasn't anything she could advise me on. I appreciate that, Noel. I honestly do, but right now, I just need to absorb it all. I'm sure you'll get an earful on Monday. Her gentle smile did enough to warm my heart and give me hope. If only I could make it through the weekend in one piece. Which would have been a hell of a lot easier had my parents not called me on Saturday. Mom, move the phone down a little. Staring at the screen, I could see only my mother's eyes and forehead. Even though she had no clue how to use FaceTime on the phone, she insisted on video calling me to see my face. There. Is that better? It was not, unless looking at her chin was better than her forehead. You should be able to see yourself in the small square in the corner of the phone. As soon as those words came out of my mouth, she pulled the camera closer to her face, likely to see this square I spoke of. Yeah, Mom, it's better. Can you see me now? I couldn't, but there was no point in wasting my time with her on her videography skills. Yes, and you look beautiful, as always. Are you getting excited about the house? It's only two more weeks, right? A long, harsh sigh blew past my lips. And somehow, that managed to get her attention enough to pull the phone away until I could see her whole face in the picture. <laughs> Go figure. Oh, no. What happened with the house? The concern in her voice nearly gutted me. Nothing, Mom. It's not the house. Then what is it? Here went nothing. Before, every time I'd been to the Petersons' house for Sunday lunch, I'd come with Kelsey. This was the first time I'd gone alone, driven myself, shown up before Jason and Tatum. I'd avoided Jason all weekend, telling him I was busy getting things set up for the closing. It wasn't all a lie. I did have things I needed to do, just not this weekend. The truth was, I couldn't face him, not yet. There was a chance he'd be pissed and want to take his anger out on me. And he had every right to. Yet that didn't mean I deserved it. I guess I needed to truly face everything before defending myself to him. And the first thing I needed to face was Kelsey telling her parents. Like hell I'd let her do that alone. For several reasons. I was just as much a part of this as she was, and no matter how I felt about her right then, I refused to let all the burden fall on her shoulders. I had to take responsibility for my part as well. The other reasons were more selfish. I didn't want to offer Kelsey the opportunity to lay blame at my feet or allow anyone else to think less of me if I wasn't there to correct any misinformation. The truth was, she'd been pregnant this entire time and never told me. Rather than just walk in like I had every other Sunday I'd been here, I knocked and waited for someone to let me in. My stomach had lodged itself in my throat, threatening to spew what little contents it had at the thought of Kelsey having already told them. I had no idea what I would face when someone came to the door, or who would be the one to open it. Luckily, it was Diane, Kelsey's mother, and she had the brightest smile on her lips. I assumed that meant Kelsey hadn't told them anything. Oh, come in, Aaron. I didn't think we'd get to see you this weekend. I guess I'm a sucker for your pasta salad. I leaned over to return her hug and then followed her down the hall to the living room, 
where I noticed Kelsey sitting in an armchair, her back to me. Diane led me into the room without so much as a hint of hesitation, pretty much confirming that nothing had been said yet. But by the way Fred, Kelsey's father, sat on the edge of the couch across from her, I could tell she'd already prepared them to hear something. Look who decided to come after all, Diane announced once we made it past the kitchen. Fred glanced up while Kelsey turned in her seat, her shocked eyes meeting mine. Good morning, everyone. I hope I'm not too late. I made sure to direct that last part at Kelsey, ensuring she'd picked up on the meaning. Sorry for intruding, but I really wanted to be here for this. Kelsey stood and placed both hands against my chest, pushing me away slightly while whispering, Why are you here? With a downy touch along her lower back, I dropped my lips to her ear, not once caring if the signals I was giving her were mixed. If you think I'm going to let you make me the bad guy with your family, you might want to think again. Her breath hitched in her throat as she pulled away, turning to face her parents. Diane clapped, eyes wide and bright as if expecting good news. Oh, are you two dating? Is that what you wanted to tell us? This is just so amazing. No, Mom, that's not it. In fact, Aaron has decided to stay somewhere else until he closes on his house in two weeks. Oh, hell no. I wasn't about to let her throw me under the bus like that, knowing the next thing she would tell them was that she was having my baby. That'd make me look like a piece of shit, and I wasn't about to let that happen. It wasn't by choice, and you know it. So please don't make it sound like I ran out on you. I'm here, am I not? While I spoke low so that my words were aimed at Kelsey, I didn't bother to keep her parents from overhearing it. It was important to me that they understand more about the situation than I knew she'd let on, because the last thing I wanted to do was defend myself after the fact. That would only make me look like more of a piece of shit by pointing a finger at their daughter right after they learned that I had knocked up their little girl. Yeah, not happening. Kelsey cleared her throat and resumed her seat in the chair, leaving me to stand next to her. I didn't bother to move or step away, only rested my hand against the back of the seat and waited for her to share the news. I'm sure this will come as a shock to you, but I can assure you that it was just as much, if not more, of a shock to me. Her voice quivered, and I had to fight against my desire to touch her, comfort her, let her know she wasn't alone. And I wanted to come here early, so that you two were the first to know. It was in that moment that I realized my reason for being here for this wasn't at all to defend myself. It had nothing to do with ensuring she didn't bury the blame at my feet. No, my need to be here to listen to her tell her parents went beyond that. I had to hear her say it, because I hadn't heard those words come from her mouth. Even when I'd confronted Kelsey, she hadn't come out and actually said that she was pregnant. With my baby. I'd asked her, and she'd told me yes. However, she'd still never uttered the one phrase I deserved to hear fall from her lips. I'm pregnant. She gulped, her throat dipping deep with the harsh swallow. And without glancing at me, she added, Aaron and I are having a baby. Before I could absorb her words or figure out how I genuinely felt about them, I was caught off guard by Diane's reaction. Her trembling fingers covered her parted lips, the same thing Kelsey did when she wanted to conceal a gasp or hide her overwhelming emotions. An exploding star had nothing on the blinding elation in her eyes, and even though a tear slipped free slithering over her cheekbone, it shone with the happiness it had been born in. This was a far cry from the reaction I had expected, as well as the one she'd had on hearing Jason and Tatum's news. Rather than boisterous excitement, she appeared to be filled with unmistakable pride, overflowing joy, and the purest love rooted in her marrow. Not one ounce of rejection or hesitation registered on her face. Fred, on the other hand, had a slightly different reaction. There was no denying the happiness in his eyes, but I had to look past the shock, confusion, and disappointment to see it. Then again, he was her father. I'd almost anticipated that to be his response. 
If my child was a girl, I'd probably react the same way. I had to stop myself for a moment, recognizing how that had been the first time I'd thought those words. My child. It brought up a swelling sensation in my chest and left my body scalding just below my skin. No matter how badly I fought it, I couldn't stop myself from reaching down and placing my hand on Kelsey's shoulder. Although I did have enough strength to keep myself from looking into her eyes. But maybe that had more to do with fear than strength. Chapter 19. Kelsey. Are you guys going to say anything? Worry strangled me as I sat there and watched my parents stare at me in shock. If my heart sped up any faster, I'd be in cardiac arrest at any moment. I wasn't sure how much more of this I could take, and if Aaron thought his touch was calming, he couldn't have been more wrong. While Mom sat there and stared at me with wide, glossy eyes, my dad sat forward, his elbows dug into the tops of his thighs. He glanced between Aaron and me, but I couldn't quite read his expression. His brows were drawn closer together, yet the lines in his forehead were mere hollows, not yet the valleys they became when he was mad. However... His lips were pressed into a flat line, which generally indicated his unrest. You said he moved out? Dad's question might have been directed at me, and his attention might have pinned me to my seat. Yet there was no doubt in my mind that this was meant for Aaron. I did, sir. Aaron answered from over my shoulder, his strong, unwavering tone nearly begging me to look at him. I'm not sure how much you both know, but I've recently bought a house. And do you plan to move Kelsey and the baby in with you? Dad wouldn't let up, but at least he had his sights on Aaron this time instead of speaking to him through me. Or are you going to make her raise this child on her own? At this point, I had to take a stand. Literally. I was on my feet in less than a second, positioning myself between Aaron and my dad, though I had no idea why, other than to protect him any way I could. That's enough, Dad. This is between Aaron and me, and we haven't gotten that far yet, okay? Let us work that part out, and we'll keep you guys in the loop. Everything fell apart after that. The front door opened, and Aunt Lori came in. She was always the first one here, which meant it was only a matter of time before Jason and Tatum showed up. If I had to guess, we had less than ten minutes. Five, if Marlena and her brood were on their way. Mom wrapped me in her arms, hugging me so tightly... I wasn't sure I'd ever be able to catch my breath again. And while my mom squeezed me, Dad took Aaron to the side, as if this had all been planned to keep me from defending him to my parents. And then there was Aunt Lori, setting her stuff in the kitchen without a clue what was happening. Oh, congratulations, Kelsey! Okay, so maybe she did have a clue. I planned to kill Tatum and her big fat mouth. Mom released me and turned to her sister. Their resemblance was uncanny sometimes. Generally speaking, someone might guess they were related, though not sisters. But then there were moments like these when they'd look at each other with complete opposite expressions on their faces. Yet they could have been twins. That was it. Mom's shock was identical to my aunt's excitement, which didn't say much about either one of them. If anything, it made me want to take a look in the mirror to make sure I didn't get that gene. You knew? Mom gaped at Aunt Laurie, then swung her betrayed eyes to me. How did she know before we did? I was just about to open my mouth and explain to her how best friends work, how Tatum and I typically tell each other everything before anyone else, when my aunt cut me off. She flicked her wrist and fluttered her lashes, a rapid eye roll that she reserved for moments of dismissal. Oh, Diane, I didn't know, but I do now. So you just guessed she was pregnant and went with it, hoping you were right? Mom propped her fist on her hip, no longer paying any attention to anyone else in the room. If anything, she appeared to be in awe of her sister. Then it dawned on me. Aunt Lori was sneaky. Her sweet and innocent persona was just that, a facade. With a hand on my mom's shoulder, I carefully turned her just enough to face me. She didn't, Mom. All she said was congrats. That could mean so many things. You're the one who just told her what it was. I wish I could have seen the look my mother gave her sister as she peered to the side, but I couldn't. Because right then, my attention was pulled to my dad and Aaron. 
Technically, it was pulled to Dad's growly voice, but once I noticed how Aaron had dropped his head forward almost in shame, I couldn't look away. And again, before I could address that situation, more people came down the hall into the kitchen. Connor, my nephew, ran into the room and latched onto my dad's leg. Papa, I got a new truck, Papa. Wanna play it with me? And just like that, my dad's entire demeanor changed. He picked up Connor and swooped him into the kitchen, leaving Aaron behind with his chin tucked to his chest. I desperately wanted to go to him, make this right, but I wasn't sure if he even wanted me to. It wasn't a secret that he was angry with me, but that didn't mean I felt the same. Truthfully, I felt the complete opposite. I hated how I'd hurt him, and any time he set his betrayed eyes on me, it only made the knot in my stomach tighten, the ache in my chest deepen. I wanted to go to him, but I couldn't, because Marlena chose that instant to shout, Oh my god, you're pregnant? How far along are you? Two months, Aaron answered for me, suddenly finding his voice. Are you kidding me? Two months? Why would you keep that from me? My sister could be perceptive when she wanted to be. Wait. This is the first time you've told anyone? Aaron stepped up, and the thought of what he'd say terrified me. Technically, Friday was the first time she told anyone, and that was me. What about Tatum? I had no idea who'd ask that, but whoever it was had impeccable timing because just then, my best friend appeared in the kitchen and froze in shock at the sound of her name. Her eyes shifted between everyone in the room while she stood frozen, like a deer caught in headlights. What about me? Did you know she's two months pregnant? Marlena turned to my best friend. Oh, why am I wasting my breath? Of course you did. I bet you knew from the beginning, didn't you? Tatum said. I'm not sure if I should answer that. At the same time, Jason turned his bugged eyes to me and asked, You're pregnant? This couldn't have been better scripted for a comedy show. Well, I guess the cat's out of the bag. Tatum clapped her hands and moved farther into the kitchen, feigned confidence, straightening her posture. And I gotta say, it's about time. So you've known all along? Jason pinned her with a stare. Well, yes, but only because she needed someone to read the stick for her. I've been trying to get her to announce it, but she didn't want to do that until she told the father, and for some reason, that's taken forever and a day. And when Tatum was nervous, she didn't stop talking. Then again, I don't really blame her. She developed feelings for him, but then he kind of smashed those dreams when she caught him. Tatum, that's enough. I needed her to shut up. Now. I'm sorry. I didn't want to make him out to be a bad person or anything. I haven't even met him. So he could be a really great guy for all I know. I guess only time will tell. Wait. My mom finally spoke up, moving toward the center of the circle created by the members of my obnoxious family, arms out at her sides, like she was warding off a brawl. I thought you said you and Aaron were having a baby. Is he not the father? What? Tatum shrieked. I'm pretty sure Marlena harmonized with her, too. Aaron Bacchus? That Aaron? The one standing right there? Yes. Aaron's the father. This Aaron. Before anyone could say or do anything else, Jason turned cold eyes on his best friend who refused to look at him. You knocked up my baby cousin? The one thing I told you before I even asked if you could stay at her place was that you didn't touch her. Silence fell over the entire room. Seconds later, my dad carried Connor to the back patio while my mom followed with my niece in her arms. Aunt Lori wasn't far behind, leaving the four of us, plus my sister, in the room alone. Marlena stuck out like a sore thumb, yet there was no way she would have missed this opportunity. She wasn't one who enjoyed drama in her life, but she sure as hell ate up everyone else's any time she could. It's not what you think. Aaron finally spoke, his hands up as if surrendering. She was already pregnant when I moved in. That was all it took to drag Jason around the breakfast bar into the living room, closer to where we stood. And you didn't bother to mention that when I suggested you stay with her for a few months? I didn't know, man. I swear. She just told me two days ago. Trust me, this is as much of a shock to me as it is to you. If she was already pregnant by the time you moved in and you two hadn't met until the night before the wedding, how could you be the father? With this, Marlena sat on a bar stool to witness it all. 
No doubt planning to use this to fill mom in on what she'd missed. My life was seriously becoming the next episode of Jerry Springer. Aaron turned his attention to me, silently asking me to step in and explain the parts he couldn't. Considering this likely wasn't the most comfortable thing to discuss with my cousin, best friend of his or not. We met at Boots, the night of Tatum's bachelorette party. I took a deep breath and lifted my gaze to the ceiling, unable to look at anyone as I gave as much information as I could without dirtying my image. I didn't know who he was, and he had no idea I was your cousin. So while we technically met a few weeks before your wedding, we didn't realize who the other was until the night of the rehearsal, when we ran into each other at the elevators. Back up a second. I think I'm missing something. Marlena couldn't just sit there and listen. No. She had to get all the details, even when it had nothing to do with her. How did you two not know who the other was? I guess you both have rather common names, but come on. It was a bachelorette party, one I now wish I'd gone to. Did you not once stop and think of the coincidences? You know, like how you had a friend who was about to get married, whose cousin's name is Kelsey, who also happens to be the bride's best friend? None of that came to mind. Again, Aaron refused to answer, only regarded me with pleading eyes, begging me to save him. I couldn't deny him that, especially after all I'd already put him through. So I huffed, shoulders dropped in resignation, and filled in the missing pieces as best as I could. It's not like we stopped to think about much, Mar. We were both in somewhat of a shitty place that night and found a way to get each other through it. Oh my god, Jason cringed. Disgust dripping from every pore on his face. The necktie? I whipped my head to the side to regard Aaron. You told him about that? Don't pretend like you didn't give details to Tatum. Hey, don't bring me into this, Tatum called from the other side of the breakfast bar, too worried to come much closer, likely out of fear of getting burned. I'm an innocent bystander here. I had no idea you were the stripper. Stripper? Damn it, Marlena. He only pretended to be one that night. It's a long story. No point in rehashing it now. I just wanted this to be over already. Can we maybe finish this conversation another time? It seems we're all caught up on the important stuff. I'm pregnant. Aaron's the father. I kept it a secret from everyone for two months. Oh, and apparently, I'm a slut. I turned to make my way back to the chair I'd been in before all this had fallen apart, needing a moment to myself. Even though I'd still technically be around everyone, I just wouldn't have to see the judgment in their eyes. But I never made it to the recliner. Aaron caught me before I could take two steps. His large hand wrapped around my upper arm. Don't ever say that again. His hushed voice flooded my ear with heat, fueled by what I could only describe as aggression. The rawness of his words was enough to make me pause and look at him, but his eyes were what made me listen. Regardless of the situation or how we got to this place, none of that makes you a slut. And hearing you say that about yourself pisses me off. You're not even close to one. I never want to hear you degrade yourself like that again. My thighs clenched together as his demand filled my body with intense arousal, and once again... I hated the fact that he was angry with me, because I wanted nothing more than to haul him into one of the back rooms and let him have his way with me. Oddly enough, all I could say was, I'm sorry. He released his hold on me and took a step back, though he kept his voice just as low as when his lips had been against my ear. Don't apologize to me. I wasn't the one talking shit about you just now. That was you. And then he walked away. I was in too much of a mental fog to grasp everything as it happened, but he apparently left. Jason followed him out to the driveway while Tatum made her way to me. Marlena voiced a few questions, none of which I responded to, yet Tatum answered what she could, which wasn't much, considering I'd left her out of the loop as much as everyone else. And before I knew it, my parents and aunt were back inside, the kids running around as if nothing had happened. Jason headed down to the dock to help my dad with the grill. Marlena took Connor and Lizzie to the patio with Mom, and Aunt Diane helped Tatum in the kitchen. All in all, this was a normal Sunday. Except for the whole having Aaron's baby thing. Oh, and Mom fawning all over me. Though it seemed my having a baby only made her play matchmaker even harder than before. 
I didn't even bother to get off the couch when Tatum opened the front door. She'd always just walked in before, so there was no reason to change things now. Not to mention, I was elbow deep in mint chocolate chip, and at this juncture, nothing was worth putting the ice cream scoop down. Really? She waved her hand around the room, closing the door behind her. It wasn't often my apartment was a mess, but when it was, Tatum was the last person I wanted to see it this way. She was probably calling me a hypocrite to herself. This is how you solve your problems? Feet on the coffee table, reality TV on the screen, and a tub of ice cream in your lap? Is there a better way? Yeah. It's called get off your ass and do something about it. What am I supposed to do about it, Tater? I sat up, though I didn't put the giant spoon down. That would not leave my hand any time soon. Please, tell me. Because it's pretty apparent that I can't make decisions for myself these days. I swear, this baby is making me irrational and stupid. She slowly lowered herself onto the cushion next to me. Kels, put down the spoon and move away from the carton. Everything will be all right, I promise. But nothing will get solved with ice cream and a stained... Is that a Justin Bieber t-shirt? I swung a small couch pillow at her and laughed. Damn, it did feel good to feel the rumbles reverberate through my chest and the heat of the smile strain my cheeks. After today, after the ups and downs at my parents' house, I hadn't been sure when I'd experience that again. I messed up, okay? Just because I'd decided to talk did not mean I'd give up my mint chocolate chip. There's nothing I can do to fix any of this. If there was, I would have done it already. This isn't how I imagined any of this would go. I don't know what to do. Well, considering you've left me out of most of this loop, why don't you start from the beginning? I gave her a side eye while scooping another spoonful into my mouth. The only part of the loop I didn't fill in for you is that Aaron's the father. Other than that one piece of information, you know everything. Why didn't you tell me about Aaron? At the time, I had no idea. You're seriously gonna have to start from the beginning. So you brought the stripper home the night of my bachelorette party. That's when you got pregnant, right? Tatum waited for my nod before continuing. That phone call in the hotel right before we headed downstairs for the rehearsal. Was that real? Or did you already know at that point? The phone call was real. I didn't know who he was until a few minutes later when I got to the elevators. When you were doing what you were doing in Jason's room. In fact, I didn't know that was Aaron until you showed up and mentioned it. I just thought I'd randomly run into the stripper that I was looking for, not at all realizing who he really was. And how did he end up the stripper at my party? I shrugged and fought hard to keep the smile off my face. It wasn't funny. Shouldn't have been funny. Yet the irony got to me every time. Our guy never showed up, as you know. So I guess someone who works at Boots, one of Aaron's friends, called him to fill in. Except he didn't know what he was filling in for. I'd asked for a doctor, and apparently since Aaron's a doctor, she thought he would be a good stand-in. It didn't hurt that he has a hard time getting women, and we were a group of drunk women. Stone, meet two birds. Out of everything I'd just said, the one thing she picked up on was Aaron's inability to get a date. What do you mean he has a hard time getting women? That man is with someone new every time I turn around. It's why we never met them. Because they... Her mouth fell open, eyes wide with realization. That little sneak. Let me guess. He makes it seem like he's a ladies' man? Oh, yeah. Big time. I never would have guessed. Although, Jay has always made a joke of it. I don't think he's ever believed Aaron when he talks about his conquests. I'm pretty sure he just plays along. Yup. This blood-sucking fetus inside me had officially made me lose my mind, because the thought of Aaron lying to his friends about being a player when the truth was far from it made me fall for him even harder. It made me think of a little boy, alone on the playground, watching everyone around him have fun. And that only fueled the hurt I already felt for him, for all I'd done to him kept from him, accused him of. But still, it seemed Tatum had spent too long with my sister because she'd adopted Marlena's way of beating the same thing to death. Why didn't you tell me after you found out? You continued to let me think you were having a stripper's baby. With my eyes closed, I rested my head on the back of the cushion and blew out a long sigh. 
Because I knew there would be no way you'd keep that from Jason. And if Jason knew, he'd tell Aaron. I wasn't ready for that to happen yet. Granted, I guess that backfired, huh? She placed her hand on my knee and waited until I opened my eyes and met her stare before saying anything. I'm sure he'll come around. He just needs to sort through it. The only thing you can do is prove to him that your heart was in the right place. Be honest with him, Kels. I don't know how to do that. The best way to keep people from knowing that you're crying is to shove more ice cream into your mouth. You can always say that the tears in your eyes are from the brain freeze. Foolproof excuse. Go to him. Tell him how you feel. Been there. Done that. Did he not listen? I need to put the carton away before it leaked through the cardboard and drenched my perfectly good shirt in melted ice cream. But I didn't want to be too far away from it in case I needed more. So I chose to put it on the coffee table instead. That was about as far as I could go. I fucked up, okay? The night of your dinner, we slept together. I told you about it, just didn't tell you who it was. Anyway, the next day, I went to tell him about the baby. Yes, I recall. This was the first time, right? When you caught him having sex with someone else? At least she retained the things I told her. That was a plus. Kept me from having to repeat myself. Correct. Except he wasn't sleeping with anyone else. In fact, he wasn't even there. Long story short, his assistant, Noelle, is a freak. And I mean that in the really good way. She and her husband were getting it on in his office while he was at the hospital for some consulting thing. I'm not entirely sure what he was doing since his job still doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But that's not the point. Then get to the point, Kels. I'm growing gray hairs over here. Arching just one brow, I glared at her, then gave up when she laughed. At me. Not with me. Because I wasn't laughing. The point, which you're so eager to hear, is that when he came home that night, completely unaware of what had taken place at his office earlier that day, I shut him out and basically accused him of being no different than my ex. The prick? Ew. That's gotta be the dirtiest insult ever. Yes. And he didn't even fully understand it at the time. My chest tightened as I recounted all the ways I'd hurt that poor boy on the playground. He tried for, like, a week and a half to break down my walls, but I refused to let him. In the end, I was wrong. Clearly. And when I went Thursday night to tell him everything, we got caught up in our feelings for each other. So I never got the words out. What do you mean, your feelings? I shrugged and stared at my fingers twisted together in my lap. Sticky from ice cream. I think I'm in love with him. Silence. When Tatum was nervous, you couldn't shut her up with a mute button. But when she was stunned, it was like someone had stolen all the words from her pretty little head. Too bad there wasn't a balance in between. Say something, Tater, I pleaded, finally giving in and looking into her eyes so she could see the desperation in mine. I've needed my best friend for weeks, but I haven't been able to go to her because of the hole I dug myself. It just kept getting deeper and deeper, and now I'm suffocating in it. She finally snapped out of it and wrapped her arms around me, pulling me to her. One of these days, we'll learn to stop keeping things from the other person. Trust me. I know all too well how lonely it is to live with a secret you can't share with your bestie. I sniffled and wiped my cheeks with the back of my hand. I fucked up, didn't I? You never know. She took a deep breath and leaned away a little bit, which meant she didn't believe her own words. Aaron's a really great guy. I never would have asked you to let him move in if I thought differently. Laughter curled my lips. You just got done telling me how you thought he was a player. That doesn't mean he can't be a good person. She waved me off and rolled her eyes. It was like old times all over again. And if I'm being honest, I thought the whole womanizer thing would prevent you from sleeping with him. I know how you feel about players. Yeah, well, that might have worked before I slept with him. You mean before you got pregnant? Same thing. Not really. Aaron had to be the most skilled lover I'd ever been with, pregnant or not. There was a good chance I would have found myself tangled up in his sheets again, even if he were an avid collector of bedpost notches. But you're right. He is a good person. Unfortunately, it took me too long to be as open and honest with him as he's been with me. 
and now he's gone. He's not gone, Kels. Yeah, he is. He's not even staying here. He's sleeping on an air mattress on the floor of his office. He'd rather take showers at the gym every morning than stay here. I've lost him. The only sound in the room was Tatum's deep inhalation, which she held for longer than usual. He's seriously living in his office? Waiting room floor, but same thing. Does anyone else know? Concern stuck to her voice like cement, weighing it down. I shook my head, yet I decided to give her more than that. I don't think so. He gets up early so he can be out and have the chairs all moved back before Noelle shows up in the mornings. I can't begin to guess if he's told anyone else. Why didn't he ask any of his friends to stay with them? We have a spare room he could have stayed in until the sale of his house goes through. I glared at her. Really, Tatum? If he had gone to Jason, he'd have to explain why he's not staying here anymore, even before he found out about the baby. What was he supposed to tell him? That we slept together and then I turned on him? Um, no. Hmm. She quirked her mouth to the side and thought. You're right. Jay probably would have killed him. That's a little hypocritical, don't you think, Tater? Jason, my cousin, worried about his best friend sleeping with me when... Oh, that's right. Jason, my cousin, had no problem at all sleeping with you, my best friend. It's not the same. Oh, it's exactly the same. Fine, it's literally identical, except for the part about you getting pregnant after a one-night stand with his best friend, prior to you knowing he was your cousin's best friend, and then him moving in with you where you continued to have sex with him while keeping it from him that you were carrying his baby. That's nothing like what happened with Jay and me. I blinked a few times, wondering how she'd managed to get one up on me. That never happened. It was a sure sign of the apocalypse. Too bad I'd never taken those prepper shows seriously. I could have used a buried school bus and a massive stash of astronaut food right about now. Let's go back to my cousin, the hypocrite, shall we? No. We shall go back to you fixing things with Aaron. All humor died on my lips. I don't know how, Tatum. I have an idea, but it won't happen overnight. Are you willing to put in the time? Of course. We're going to be tied together for at least the next 18 years. All I have is time at this point. I realized at that moment how badly I didn't want to only be tied to him due to having a child together. I wanted more with him. All right. This is what you need to do. Chapter 20. Aaron. I flung the office door open, expecting to find Kelsey, but I found Jason instead. As if seeing him and his entire family earlier today wasn't enough. What is with everyone coming to my office at almost midnight and waking me up? Don't you know there are plenty of daylight hours you could use to talk to me? Oh, and a phone? You should try that next time. I did, asshole. He pushed past me and invited himself in just like Kelsey had. If he thought we'd cuddle on my mattress too, then he needed to think again. You didn't answer, which left me no choice but to come here. If I didn't answer, there's probably a good reason for that. Like, maybe I was... sleeping? Thank God he chose to take a seat in one of the chairs instead of on my mattress. Things had already gotten weird between us earlier today at the Peterson's house. I wasn't sure how much worse they could get, and I wasn't in the mood to find out. I stood in front of him with my arms crossed over my chest. At least, I'd had the forethought before lying down to put a shirt on. Didn't need him gawking at my body the way Kelsey had. And it would be lovely if I stopped comparing Jason to Kelsey. Or better yet, just stopped thinking of Kelsey. Yeah, I doubted that would happen anytime soon. Or ever. What do you want, Jason? Didn't you say enough this morning in your aunt's driveway? I couldn't take another verbal beating from him. The things that guy could come up with at the drop of a dime would likely make a hitman shit himself. Okay, maybe not that bad, but hearing my best friend call me a fucking piece of shit wasn't the highlight of my day. Or week. Jason leaned forward and covered his face with his hands. A long, dramatic exhale rushing out. Listen, man. I'm sorry about that, okay? 
He met my stare, and I couldn't miss the honesty that reflected back at me. It's one thing to find out you've been sleeping with my cousin after you adamantly swore you wouldn't. But it's another to find out you got her pregnant. I don't mean to poke the bear, but do you really have room to point fingers at me? He shook his head, and I breathed a sigh of relief that I hadn't pissed him off. Nevertheless, that didn't stop him from glaring at me while conceding. No, not really. Which is another reason I shouldn't have come at you earlier. It caught me by surprise, and to make it all worse, I had the unfortunate knowledge of hearing the things you've said about her, not knowing it was her. So forgive me if I lost my shit for a second. I'm sorry. Well, I couldn't really ask for much more than that. You're forgiven. But is that really the reason you came here at... I checked my watch and groaned. 11.30 at night. My God, do you people not care that I have to work in the morning? And that I have to get up even earlier to make this place look like I haven't used it as my bedroom for the last week and a half? Jason stood and took two steps, stopping when he was a couple of feet away, his hands deep in his front pockets. Come stay at my place. There's no reason you should be sleeping on the floor. It's not on the floor, in case you can't tell. I have a mattress. Yeah, filled with air. What's wrong with that? Remember when waterbeds were the big thing? Watch out, bro, because air will be the next craze. And you'll be jealous of what I have. He couldn't fight back his grin, and I'd never been happier to see another man smile in my life. Guys were easy. If they were pissed, they'd tell you. You'd hash it out, and then it was water under the bridge, never to be spoken of or remembered again. However, the exception to that was when you did something to someone they cared about. Fuck with a family member they actually liked, or creep up on his woman, and your ass was grass. Luckily, Jason knew me well enough to understand the complex situation we'd found ourselves in. He'd had his moment and flipped the fuck out, and we'd moved on. I only hoped this meant it'd never be brought up again. Or remembered. Get your shit, asshole, and let's go. Tatum has the spare room made up for you. How'd you even know I was here? He shrugged and cocked his head. Kelsey? Is it too early to say anything about her big mouth? I pretended the punch to my shoulder didn't hurt when really, I'd be surprised if I could move it tomorrow. Got it. Good to know. I'll keep those thoughts to myself until the time's right. Dude, the time will never be right. His words were harsh, his voice low with impending rage, yet the slight uptick at the corners of his mouth proved that beneath it all, we'd be all right. Does this kind of make us related? Not at all. I think it does. Our kids are going to be cousins. Third cousins or something ridiculous like that. So does that make us cousins-in-law thrice removed? Got a catchy ring to it. He laughed. Actually laughed. Which made my chest rumble and shoulders jumped as I joined in the amusement. Moving into the weekend, I'd had so much against me. My issues with Kelsey on top of finding out I was going to be a father... That adding one more thing to the pile had nearly knocked me down. What had made it worse was that the one more thing happened to have been my best friend cornering me outside to tell me how disgusting he thought I was. How I was scum and didn't deserve Kelsey. That whatever had happened between us was my fault and she was better off without me. I'd never seen him so angry. And there'd been many things in high school that should have made him rage. Yet, it had never happened. So to see him so pissed and have that fury directed at me had sent me running. Granted, I hadn't engaged, which had probably only irritated him more. Had I defended myself, maybe then we could have hashed it out and been done with it before I left the driveway this morning. But I hadn't seen the point. As mad as he'd been at me, I'd been just as angry with myself. Come on and get your shit together. I don't have all night. I have to work in the morning, he said with a slap on my back and a smile across his face. You're such a dick. I laughed and stepped away. I'll stay at your place, 
but only because my back has been killing me. However, I'll head that way tomorrow. I'm dead on my feet, man. I don't have the energy or care to pack all this up and drive to your house before getting back to sleep. Not a problem. I get it. And with a solid nod, he left. As much as I wanted to fall back asleep, it wasn't that easy. I tossed and turned, unable to get Kelsey off my mind. The final straw, though, was when my phone buzzed next to me, and her name flashed across the screen. That was enough to get me up. And keep me up. Kelsey. Thank you for being there today. I wasn't expecting you to come, but I'm glad you did. Sorry if my dad and Jason made things worse on you. It took a few minutes, but I eventually found the words I wanted to say. Me. You didn't have to do that alone. And it's all right. I kind of expected it. From your dad, I mean. Not so much from Jason. Me. By the way, thanks for telling him where I'm staying. Kelsey. I thought you'd be sleeping. Kelsey. And I didn't tell him. I told Tatum. Blame her for blabbing. Me. If you thought I would be asleep, why did you text me? Kelsey. Did you not read the first message? To say thanks. Also, I figured you'd see it in the morning, which would save me the awkwardness of an uncomfortable conversation. But here we are. My smile only grew bigger. Kelsey. I didn't wake you up, did I? Me. No. Jason did. When he stopped by. I came here so I wouldn't be bothered. But I think I've had more visitors in the last five days than I had the entire time I lived with my parents. Kelsey. Speaking of your parents. Have you told them yet? Falling back into easy banter with Kelsey wasn't hard to do. But the reminder of our situation put an end to that. I wasn't sure how we would move forward or what our relationship would look like for the next 18 years, but for now, I needed a breather. And I couldn't do that while talking to her. Me. Yeah, I talked to them yesterday. While they were happy to have a grandchild, they weren't thrilled about how it had happened. Then again, these were two people who'd probably thought I was still a virgin, considering I wasn't married. They had their opinions, and they'd advised me on what to do and how to handle the situation. But I wasn't about to tell her any of that. She didn't need to know how everyone, even my family, seemed to be on her side. Granted, they claimed they weren't on a side, yet I wasn't sure what else it would be called when they told me to give her a chance. Me. Listen, I have to go. Sleep beckons. A response never came, so I put the phone down and rolled over, praying slumber would come. And just before I dozed off, my cell buzzed once. I didn't need to look at it to know it was Kelsey. And I knew if I read her message, it'd be that much longer before sleep would come again. So I left it for the morning. It was a sock emoji. Are you ever going to tell me what's going on with you? Noelle invited herself into my office after the last patient left. Something happened on Friday. It's now Tuesday. You said you'd probably talk to me after the weekend. Well, the weekend's over. Talk to me. You're starting to worry me. I'm having a baby. I expected shock to color her face. Yet that's not what happened at all. A smile stretched across her lips. Her gaze softened, and her arms crossed over her chest. Relaxed. That's amazing news, Aaron. How far along are you? You look great, by the way. Would have never guessed you were with child. My shoulders shook with the humor that filled me, and had I not been in the middle of typing up notes, I probably would have laughed out loud. Instead, I picked up a pencil out of the pen holder and threw it at her. You're a dick. See, that's what I thought you had. But it seems I was wrong. Granted, I've never checked... But I'd like to believe that if you didn't have one, I would have figured it out by now. I guess it does make perfect sense, though. You don't date much, can't get laid too often. I always chalked those up to you living with your parents. But now, it's all so clear. What the hell are you going on about? 
I stopped what I was doing and turned to give her my full attention. And don't say you're still hung up on the bullshit that I'm the one who's having the baby because we both know that's not the case. She shrugged and then took a seat across from me, leaning into the desk with her elbows. I figured this way you could tell me without making me pry it out of you. I don't want to be nosy and ask, so I thought this would be a better way. When have you ever been worried about butting into my personal life? You've done it for the last four years. Just ask, Noel. I don't butt into anything. You've always offered it up. And I'm clearly not going to stop you and tell you that I don't want to hear the comedy show that is your dating life. So I listen and laugh. Behind your back, of course. Never to your face. Her gaze narrowed when I glared at her. Okay, fine, I've laughed at you a few times. But in my defense... Well, I don't really have a defense. Carry on. I covered my face with my palms, hoping she couldn't see how big my grin was. This was ridiculous. I'd had a shitty few days, more stress than I ever cared to have again, and this woman had me laughing like a teenager, like I had no reason to be so high-strung. After recovering, I shook it off and sat forward, matching her posture with my elbows on my side of the desk. Kelsey's pregnant. I ignored her gasp and continued. Apparently it happened that very first night, when we met at Boots and then went back to her place. She's known since before Jason's wedding, before I moved in with her, and she's kept it from me this whole time. It wasn't until I saw the sorrow in her eyes that I remembered her struggle with getting pregnant. I felt like an asshole. Like I was complaining about my situation when I knew damn well she would have given her left arm to be in my shoes. I'm so sorry, Noelle. I didn't mean... Don't apologize. It's not like you could control any of this. Well, I guess technically you could have controlled getting Kelsey pregnant by wearing a condom. But I think it's a little too late to revisit that lesson from health class. I did wear one. I've never not worn one. And you're sure it's your baby? I took a moment to contemplate that theory. I'm about as sure as I can be without a DNA test. I don't see why she'd lie about it, especially to her family. Jason wasn't happy when he found out, and I'm just waiting for her dad to show up with a shotgun and either shoot me or demand I marry her. So really, nothing good could have possibly come from her lying about me being the father. And you're sure you wore one? I shifted on my chair and pulled my wallet from my back pocket. Right behind the credit card slots was a small pocket where I'd always kept a few condoms just in case. You could never be too prepared. I pulled one out and tossed it on the desk. I've always worn one. Noel picked it up, examining the wrapper in the light at all angles, and then threw it at me with a large, ridiculous smile on her face, eyes bright and filled with amusement. I don't understand how you can be such a brilliant professional, yet so damn stupid in the real world. Seriously, Aaron? What the hell happened to you in grad school? What do you mean? I examined the foil package she'd tossed at me, but I didn't see anything wrong with it. I even tilted it in the light, but I didn't find any holes or puncture marks, so I didn't have the slightest clue what she'd seen when she looked at it. You do know they put expiration dates on those for a reason, right? She grabbed the condom from my hand, slapped it onto the desk between us, and pointed to the numbers along the ridges at the top. That's fucking stupid. Why in the world would they put that there? And why is it stamped instead of printed? You think I could see that? I picked it up for a closer look. Eh, it's not that out of date. Noelle giggled, leaning back in her chair with her arms stretched over her head. It's about as out of date as curdled milk. I rolled my eyes and tossed the packet into the trash beneath my desk then thought better of it and put it back in my wallet to toss it somewhere else. The last thing I needed was to have someone see it in my office and question why I'd have it there. What I don't understand is how you could possibly keep those things for that long. She didn't have to come out and say it, as her question insinuated it enough. It definitely made me look like I never got laid. I found them when I was packing up my room. 
They were always my favorite kind, so I put a few in my wallet just in case. It's not like they've been in there since I bought them. Let's hope not. She smirked and pulled herself to her feet. Anyway, if you need to talk to anyone, I'm here. I'm sure you have other people to go to, but figured I'd offer in case you wanted a different view on it. Wait, I called out, stopping her before she left the room. What do you mean, a different view on it? Well, I'm sure your guy friends have their opinions, and I'd be willing to bet your parents have their own. I just might be able to provide a female's perspective on it. You know, say, let you glimpse into what it might be like in her shoes. She made a good point, though I wasn't ready to hear it yet. I think I'll take you up on that offer, but not now. I'm not there mentally. As much as I want to have an idea of her motivations, I need a bit to wrap my mind around everything. No worries. You know where to find me when you're ready. And with that, she was gone, leaving me with my thoughts and her words. While I was grateful that Jason had given me a place to stay for the last two weeks, one with a real bed, that didn't mean I spent much time at his house. Things were still a little... off around him. And for the first time ever, I actually felt uncomfortable around Tatum. She hadn't done anything to make me feel that way other than being Kelsey's best friend. I had no idea what those two talked about. But I definitely didn't care to be the topic of any conversation. As I stepped out of the bathroom, hair still wet from my shower, I was surprised to see Tatum standing in the hall, a cold beer in her hand. I pointed at it and asked, Should you be drinking that? I may not be a real doctor, but I'm fairly certain you should avoid alcohol while pregnant. With an easy laugh, she extended her arm and held the beer out for me to take. I grabbed it for you. And then waited for me to get out of the shower? You don't find that the slightest bit weird? What if I don't want it? Too bad. It's already opened, so it looks like you'll have to drink it. And while you do that, maybe we should sit down and have a chat? I dropped my head forward and groaned. Will this chat be over when the beer is gone? Yep. With that, I took the cold beer from her hand and followed her to the couch. If all I had to do was finish this one drink before I could leave the room, then she was about to have the world's quickest conversation. Why have you avoided Kelsey since she told you about the baby? At least she didn't waste any time getting straight to the hard questions. I haven't avoided her. That wasn't completely true. Over the last two weeks, any time she'd texted me about the pregnancy or the baby, I'd responded. And recently, she'd resorted to sending emojis. But every time I saw that pair of blue socks pop up in a text, I broke a little more. Became weaker. Thoughts muddled and off track. I couldn't handle that. And the only thing I could do to safeguard myself was not respond. At all. Really? What would you call it? What am I supposed to say to her, Tatum? I glanced around the quiet room in search of some sort of backup. And where's Jason? Shouldn't he be here for this? You're in your pajamas, for Christ's sake. And I just got out of the shower. This seems rather inappropriate. She laughed and glanced down at her outfit. I'm in a t-shirt and yoga pants. And we're not even sitting next to each other. She had a point there. While I'd taken the recliner, she sat on the sofa with plenty of space between us. Not to mention we're talking about Kelsey? Nothing inappropriate here, so stop deflecting and start talking. I dropped my head against the back of the recliner in a desperate attempt to melt into the cushion and disappear. It's not that I'm ignoring her. I just don't have anything to say. It's not like she was overly chatty for the weeks on end that she knew she was pregnant with my child and never told me. So why am I the bad guy for not reaching out to her about it? That's not what I mean, Aaron. Her eyes softened as she relaxed into her seat, likely assured I wasn't going to jump up and leave. But this was the reason she was so scared to tell you about it in the first place. And in a way, you're proving her right. 
All you're doing is justifying her fears. Except it wouldn't be like this had she been honest with me from the start. Is that all you're pissy about? That she didn't tell you when she found out? I picked at the label on the bottle, trying to sort through the last couple of weeks. This is my first child, Tatum. She stole moments and memories from me that I'll never get back. I feel robbed of the excitement of finding out I'm going to be a dad for the first time. That first doctor's appointment, hearing the heartbeat. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if she would have found out the sex before telling me. So no, this is more than being pissy that she waited so long. She took things I'll never be able to get back. She was quiet for a moment. But when her eyes met mine, I could see the sympathy that flowed through her veins. Do you think you'll ever be able to get over that? Or will you hold this against her forever? No, not forever. Honestly, the only reason it's gone on for this long is because I've been swamped with the house stuff. The appraisal, inspection, on top of furnishing the entire place. I haven't had a lot of time to process it all. There was also this issue of not being ready to delve into those feelings, but that was irrelevant. Why haven't you just told her these things? You found out that she kept it from you and you left. Don't you think she deserves a conversation, or at the very least, to hear why you're so angry? As it stands right now, she has no idea what your reasons are for ignoring her. I nodded, though it was more to myself as I absorbed her opinion on the matter. You're right. She does. But I guess I haven't been ready to discuss it with her yet. It's not like I'm trying to punish her or anything. Honestly, Tatum, I've been busy. I've had a lot on my plate, and I don't think it's fair or right to go to her about what I'm feeling until I've fully dissected how I feel. Agreed. But you're closing on your house tomorrow, and I think I overheard you tell Jay that the furniture company is delivering everything by four. So about how much longer do you think it'll be before you'll be in a place to explain it all to her? I rubbed my eyes, already tired of the pressure. I don't know. I guess that all depends on how long it takes me to get settled in and back to a somewhat regular routine where I'll have a few moments to analyze the entire situation. I don't want to have to keep going back and forth with it. I would like to sit down, explain it all, and then move the fuck on. Is there anything she could do or say that would make this better for you? I shrugged. I doubt it. It's not like she can give me these things, allow me the chance to experience it all with her. I think it more or less comes down to me taking the time to move through the emotions and put it behind me so I can move on. Her smile was sad, though her eyes held understanding. I get it. I just hate seeing my best friend so broken, you know? I don't condone her actions. I tried to get her to tell you before I even knew you were the stripper. But that doesn't mean I think she deserves to be isolated during this time. She's having a baby. Your baby. And above all else, that kid should come first. Not your resentment. Not her fears. Well, wasn't that a punch in the gut? I agree. And I promise, I'm doing what I can to move past this with her. But the last thing I want to do is open a discussion about it before I've sorted through it all. She's had her time to process it. Now it's my turn. It's not my fault she didn't allow us to do it simultaneously. All right, I'll leave you to it then. But if this goes on for more than another week, expect me to beat down your door and force you to face it. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Good. Now you may finish your beer in peace. And with that, she got up and walked out of the room, leaving me with a full drink, uncomfortable silence, and thoughts of Kelsey. Chapter 21 Aaron a week after I'd closed on the house, Kelsey had sent me a message about a last-minute doctor's appointment, asking if I'd be able to make it. It had concerned me, considering she'd told me that her regular checkup wasn't until Thursday, 
So I was confused why she'd need to go a few days earlier, and at the last minute. Regardless, I'd told her I'd be there, and I was. The problem was, she'd left me sitting in a small, cozy room all by myself while she was somewhere else getting the scan. And during all this, no one bothered to tell me what was going on. It wasn't until the lights dimmed and the giant TV screen came on that I realized she'd had something up her sleeve, and this wasn't a typical appointment. Soft music played in the background as black and white pictures scrolled across the screen. At first, I thought they were generic, more of an advertisement for the office. But when Kelsey's voice came on, I realized they were sonograms of our child. My baby. Tuesday, March 12th, she said through the speakers. I found out today that I'm pregnant, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. So I figured I'd write it all down to sort through the mess I've gotten myself into. I swallowed, realizing she'd chronicled her pregnancy thus far, at least the beginning of it. And this was her way of including me in the steps I'd felt cheated out of. Had I known this was her plan, I doubted I would have shown up. But since I was here, and this gave me a chance to hear her out without having to face her, I decided it was worth sticking around for. A few weeks ago, I had a one-night stand. A really hot, incredible night with a stranger I never planned to see again. It was supposed to be that one time, and that one time only. But now, I'm pregnant with his baby, and I don't even know who he is. I don't know how to find him, what name to list on the birth certificate, or if he'd even want to know. And while I realize I don't need to have all these answers right now, that I have time to figure it all out, I'm choking on all the what-ifs that continue to swarm me as each second passes me by. My stomach twisted into knots at the sound of her confession. Somehow, through all this, I'd never taken the time to think about what it had been like for her. How scary it must have been. How alone she must have felt. And now, hearing her admit it, even without looking me in the eye while speaking her truth, gutted me. Sunday, March 17th. A picture of her flat stomach came up on the screen. Well, little one, I know who your daddy is. It was quite a surprise, but at least he's not a dancer like I originally thought. So that's good. The slight giggle in her tone put a smile on my face. But the bad news is... He's going to be living with us for a few months. And as much as I wanted to tell him about you... I think it was divine intervention that it didn't happen. I have no idea how he'll take the news. And the last thing I want right now is someone or something making me doubt this. I won't be able to handle any negativity surrounding you. And just like that, the smile vanished while a noose circled my neck. Sunday, March 31st. Your daddy came to lunch today at your grandparents' house. You'll understand what these are in time. And I think I learned more about him today than in the last two weeks of knowing him combined. I thought back to that day. We were together until she went to bed. She must have written this entry then. He's not just a pretty face attached to a fantastic body. He's incredibly smart. I hope you get his intelligence. And eyes. And skin. If you're a boy, I hope you look just like him. But only if you get my feet. His aren't anything to look at. I laughed. More curious now than ever before about what all she'd written that she'd never admitted aloud. He's making it harder and harder to keep you a secret from him. I only need to make it a couple of months until he buys a house and moves out. But if he keeps acting this way, I may not make it that long. And as much as I want him to know about you, I don't want whatever this is between him and me to end. That's my worry. That he'll freak out and run. Maybe accuse me of trying to trap him now that I know he's a doctor. And... I'm just not ready to lose his company quite yet. Especially after we finally had a real conversation today. Oh, and your grandma thinks I should marry him. I can only imagine what she'll say when she finds out about you. 
Lord, that will be entertaining to say the least. Hearing that made me recall the Sunday I'd gone to the Petersons' house to be with Kelsey as she told her parents. I couldn't get her mother's reaction out of my head, or her dad's for that matter. It had been weeks, and he apparently wasn't still angry with me, but that didn't mean I was ready to go fishing with the guy. He'd likely toss me overboard and take off. Tuesday, April 9th. She took a deep breath and then released it in a quick huff, making me worried about what had happened on this day. I tried to feel him out tonight, to see where his head's at with having a baby or family, and I realize he doesn't know about you. But all he kept talking about was some woman he works with, about how she's struggled to have a baby of her own only for others who never wanted kids to get knocked up during a one-night stand. I couldn't handle it anymore and walked away. I don't think I can do this. I just wish I had a sign one way or the other so I can stop guessing how he'll take the news. I'd forgotten all about that conversation. And now, hearing about it from her perspective, I wanted nothing more than to go back in time and change it all. I'd never meant to make her feel that way. No wonder she hadn't told me sooner. This entire time, I'd blamed her for keeping this from me, yet she'd tried several times only for me to block her at every attempt. And not just block her, but make her feel like shit as well. Thursday, April 11th. I heard your heartbeat for the first time today. Just then, a rhythmic whooshing sound filled the room before fading out, just in time for Kelsey's voice to return. It was the most beautiful sound I'd ever heard in my life. But it'd be a lie if I said I wasn't filled with sadness at the same time. Her voice danced with a quiver, and I closed my eyes, imagining the tears that had lined her lower lids. Had she been in front of me right now, reading her innermost thoughts, I'd have pulled her into my arms and eased the ache that had spread from her lips to my heart. I was alone when the audible sound of your life inside me filled me with so much love. And as much as I wish your grandma or even Tatum had been with me, the one person I truly wanted there is your father. And he couldn't be. Because I still haven't told him about you. I hate that he doesn't know. I hate even more that he's missing all of this. But I'm a coward. And I'm selfish. I don't want to lose him. I love you, my baby. I just hope he does too. I dropped my head into my hands and ran my fingers through my hair, whispering, I do. I do love you. And as those words came out of my mouth, I had no idea which one they were meant for. Perhaps both. My child and Kelsey. Her voice had cleared in time for the next entry to sound through the speakers and more pictures of ultrasounds and her stomach, as well as ones of me, her, and her family filled the screen. Tuesday, April 16th. I cringed at the date, knowing exactly what had happened that day. I'm going to tell him today, little one. I can't go into specifics with you, because it's certainly not age-appropriate, but your father and I had a really good talk last night. I think he'll be okay with the news. Maybe even more than okay. Perhaps happy? I can only hope so. Regardless, I plan to talk to him after work and tell him all about you. I just pray he doesn't get mad that I've kept it from him for this long. If he does, I guess I deserve it, right? My heart sped up, slamming into my sternum. I didn't want to hear what came next. Sorrow clenched her voice as she said. I didn't tell him. Without going into details, I don't think he's ready to hear that he's going to be a father. In fact, I'm not sure he even wants to be a dad. At least not right now. Or maybe just not with me. Unfortunately, he doesn't have much of a choice in the matter. But for now, I can't tell him. I can't even be around him right now. The thought of it makes my heart break. I wasn't one to cry, but damn, that almost got me. 
hearing in her own words what she'd felt that day. All this time I'd been angry that she'd made assumptions about what she'd walked in on, not once taking into account the pain she'd experienced. And now, it was almost too much to bear. Then she cleared her throat. Saturday, May 4th. I stilled, held my breath, and waited to hear her version of that day. At this point, I'm not even sure if I'll ever let you read this journal. Not even when you're grown and married and having a baby of your own. I'm sure there are things in here you should never know about, and this will be another one. She paused to take a deep breath, her inhale shaking like a jello mold during an earthquake. I glanced up at the screen, as if I'd be able to see her face. I knew it wouldn't be there, but the sound of her pain called to me anyway. Instead of her face, though, I saw pictures of me as a kid, which she had clearly gotten from her sister or Jason, as they were mostly my teenage years, mixed in with some of her around the same ages. It was impossible to see those and not try to imagine what our child would look like, who it would resemble. I screwed up. Badly. Not only did I hurt Aaron, but I think I might have ruined things for us. Permanently. He's gone, and I doubt he'll ever come back. Even after he finds out about you, I don't think he'll ever be the same. And it kills me. It hurts so much, this pressure in my chest. It's like I can't breathe. And I don't know what to do other than tell him the truth, which I will do, once I find the courage to face him again. I closed my eyes and fought back my emotions. Friday, May 10th. Just hearing the date was a stab wound to my chest, straight through my heart. He knows. I can't tell for sure how he feels about it. But he knows. And he wants nothing to do with me. If I screwed things up for you to have a relationship with your father, I'm so sorry. Emotion tightened her voice and filled it with sheer heartache. That was the very last thing I ever wanted to do. The background music broke away, and when I glanced up at the screen, I found Kelsey's face, tears glistening in her eyes. I stood, unable to remain in my seat on the couch, and moved closer to the video of her. Don't freak out. But Tatum told me what you said to her about feeling cheated out of everything up until now. Please don't be mad at her. She's only trying to help, and without her sharing that piece of information with me, I never would have been able to find a way to at least try to make it right for you. The passages you just heard me read were from my journal. The morning after the bachelorette party, I found a notebook in my old bedroom at my parents' house, so I took it home with me. I didn't realize at the time that it would come in handy for this. But from the first day I found out that I was pregnant, I logged almost all my thoughts and feelings regarding the baby. It wasn't until I gasped for air that I realized I'd held my breath as she spoke, as if inhaling would keep me from hearing what she had to say. I must have written in it almost every day. But I only pulled the most important ones for you. If you would like to read every passage, I'm more than happy to give you the journal to read. I would have given it to you now, but... Since I'm still pregnant, I thought it might be best if I continue to use it. At least until the baby's here. I glanced around the room, as though I'd find her standing behind me. But still the room remained empty. Just me and the pre-recorded video of the mother of my child. If that wasn't depressing, I wasn't sure what was. You're probably wondering what you're doing here. You can say that again. I mumbled to the screen, not caring that no one could hear me. Well, since I kept you from all the early milestones, I thought I'd let you have one of the biggest. If you want it, of course. If not, you're free to go. Leave this room, and the woman at the front desk will give you a disc of all the 3D ultrasound images that were taken today. But if you want to know what we're having, if it's a boy or a girl, stick around. I don't know the results, 
Only you will get them. And if you choose to share it with me, that's your choice. Or you can keep it to yourself like I did with the first 12 weeks of the pregnancy. Either way, the receptionist will have the images on a disc for you. I stood, stunned, motionless, unable to speak or even blink, shocked at the gesture she'd offered willingly. In all honesty, I hadn't yet decided if I wanted to learn the gender or not by the time I saw the results on the screen. I'd stayed so long that I'd lost my chance to leave. And after that, I couldn't contain the emotion that thrived in me. I'm going to be a father. It became real in that moment. As if the last four weeks had never happened. Chapter 22. Kelsey. Any word from Aaron? Tatum asked as we walked out of the grocery store. Two carts full of food for her baby shower that would also double as their gender reveal party. A letter came to the apartment yesterday addressed to him. I called him about it, and he asked me if I could bring it to him. But other than that, no. It had been five days since the doctor's appointment. I didn't want to bring it up to him, but I didn't know how much longer I could last before losing my cool and demanding he speak to me. Shock raised her dark brows. Nothing about the ultrasound? The journal entries? The gender? Nope, nothing. He'd gone with me to my regular checkup on Thursday, and even then he'd never brought it up. I wouldn't lie. That hurt. I told him that he didn't have to tell me if he didn't want to. I guess he's still punishing me. We reached her SUV and parked the carts behind it while she lifted the back gate. She continued to talk while we moved the bags into the trunk. Maybe he didn't stick around to find out. He did. My chest constricted and tiny pins pricked the backs of my eyes. Marlena saw him at the store and asked him about it. And he told her that he knew what we were having. But he wouldn't tell her and I guess he didn't stick around long enough to let her pull it from him. Well, maybe he'll say something when you get to his house. I rolled my eyes and laughed. Doubtful. I'm the one who told him that he had a letter, and it took him almost an entire day to get back to me about it. Even though I tried to play it off like a joking matter, that didn't mean I wasn't ripped apart any time I thought about his absence and avoidance. Foolishly, I'd believed things would change once he got his house. I thought he'd come around and find the time to talk to me after he got all moved in and unpacked. But he'd been there for a week and a half, and from what I'd heard, based on the things he'd told Jason, he'd been settled in since the end of the first week. So I'd given up hope that we'd ever move past my mistakes. I hadn't just made my bed to lie in it. I'd set the house on fire, and now I had to sit in the soot and smoke. Tatum put the last bag in the trunk and then stepped away to close the hatch. How long are you going to let it go on before you say something? What can I say? I don't have any right to bring it up, so I can't. She huffed before setting her sad eyes on me. Want me to say? Don't you dare say a word, Tater. I appreciate all you've done to help me. And be there for me through all this. But really, I think this would be better left alone. I meant it. There was no way I would have made it through the last month without her. Well, let me know if there's anything I can do. She pushed the shopping cart to the front of her SUV and unlocked the door with the key fob. You're still coming over before the party next weekend to help me set all this up, right? I wasn't planning on it. I winked when she rolled her eyes. Of course I'll be there. I moved around her vehicle to mine and settled in behind the steering wheel. As long as I was around Tatum, my nerves were fine. But now, when I was alone and knew I would see Aaron in about ten minutes, they were fried. I was so anxious that the drive to his new house went by in the blink of an eye. And before I knew it, I stood on his porch, my heart hammering in my chest. I rang the doorbell and a second later, my phone vibrated with an incoming text. One look at the screen and my stomach flipped. It was from Aaron, telling me to come in. I had to read it about 84 times to make sure I hadn't misunderstood. I'm in the back. Just walk in. Because, you know, those words could mean so many different things. 
and eventually I grabbed the cold doorknob and turned, carefully pushing it open as if sneaking in. But the second I made it inside, my heart stopped. Air left my lungs. Oxygen couldn't reach my brain. There was a good chance I'd died on the way here. And this was my heaven. Aaron stood about ten feet in front of me, hands deep in his pockets, eyes hesitantly meeting mine. If nerves had a voice, they'd sound like his when he said, Hey. If they could smile, it'd look like his when I moved two steps closer, short and lopsided, cautious. And if nerves had eyes, they'd be the deepest green, imploring me to go to them like an outstretched offered hand. My stomach twisted into knots, and then those knots twisted into more, with each step I took from the front door to the man in front of me. This had to be a dream. Or a trap. I'd barely spoken to Aaron in weeks, and now he waited for me in the middle of a room, gaze glued to me like he wanted to pour every thought, every emotion, every want and desire into that one stare, in the hopes I'd read and understand them. However, as soon as I came to a stop less than three feet away, my fear overrode all other emotion and flipped me on my head. I held out the envelope that had come to the apartment addressed to him. My tongue wouldn't form words. My chest wouldn't expand to pull more air into my lungs. And my knees were on the verge of giving up, threatening to make me fall to the floor at his feet. But luckily, none of that happened before he could say, Open the letter, Kelsey. It's your mail, though. Open it, he repeated more sternly this time. I hesitated hoping my thoughts would settle on something coherent to say. In the end, I went with, If you wanted me to read your mail, why make me come all the way here? You could have just asked me to do that the other day when I told you about it in the first place. Rather than issue more demands or argue back, he lunged toward me, held my cheeks in his hands, and without pause covered my mouth with his lips. It was intense yet short-lived, although even when he pulled his face from mine... He never dropped his hands or shifted his attention away from my eyes. Kelsey, please open the letter. As if I couldn't think on my own, I did as he said, not bothering to look at what I was doing as I slid my finger beneath the flap and tore through the envelope. It wasn't until he took a step backward, giving me space to focus on the letter in my hand, that I dropped my chin and unfolded the piece of paper that had been neatly tucked inside. If you want to know what gender our baby is, open the double doors. I flipped the paper over, looking for more instructions, as if the one sentence printed on the front wasn't enough. But as soon as I stopped questioning it and met his stare once more, peace washed over me. It stirred through my body, coursed through my veins, and took control of my every movement, starting with my feet. It was like I wasn't in control of my actions and had no defense against each step I took toward the room behind the French doors just off the entryway. When I'd pointed out this house to Aaron, this room had been a selling point, the perfect space for a home office. I'd also mentioned its use as a baby's room in the event I ever found the courage to let him know about ours. Standing in front of the double doors, I closed my eyes and took a long, deep breath. I wasn't sure if I should turn the handle and find out the sex of my baby, or back away and leave. Most of that confusion came from the uncertainty of his reasons. He'd had days to tell me what we were having, yet he never had. He could have called, come over, sent a text, but still, he hadn't done any of those things. Instead, he'd waited for me to come to him, as if this were no big deal. Just as I fisted my hands at my sides, the sound of crinkling paper caught my attention. It yanked me out of the twisted, insecure thoughts enough to remind me why I was here in the first place, why I stood in front of these doors. It brought to mind his kiss, the lingering tingle on my lips left behind from his. He hadn't waited for me to come to him. He'd orchestrated the whole thing. And once I realized that... I no longer cared that I hadn't received a phone call or a text, or that he hadn't reached out to tell me what we were having. If this was the way he wanted to tell me, to show me, then I had to be the luckiest girl in the world.
Heat covered my back like a warm blanket on a cold night. And when I glanced over my shoulder, I found him behind me, practically molding his body to mine. Do you want to know? He asked in my ear. And the second I nodded, he opened the door. I gasped and covered my lips at the side of the pastel walls. Instantly, the room blurred beyond my tears, so I turned to face him, meeting his eyes, holding his stare, needing to see his face, his reaction, his emotion. I didn't get any furniture, he started, as if that had even been a thought in my head. I was hoping we could go together to pick it out, but only under one condition. I nodded, then shook my head. Then I nodded again. What condition? I managed to get out past the knot in my throat. That we only buy one crib, one dresser, one set of clothes. He took my hands in his and lowered his head to bring his eyes closer to mine. I don't want two houses. This one and your apartment. Only one. And preferably this one since I just bought it. I don't want shared custody or rotating weekends. I stood motionless while his every word hit my ears, breathed life into my heart, and etched itself into my soul, where no one and nothing could ever take them from me. I want you, here, with me, for me. He lowered his lips to mine, but he kept the tiniest space between them as he continued to whisper the most beautiful promises I'd ever heard. I fucked up, Kelsey. I blamed you for not giving me a chance, yet... I did the same to you. Do you think we can start over? I nodded and closed my eyes, my breath passing through my lips only to heat my face as it blossomed between us. He captured my cheeks in his hands and tilted my head back, forcing me to look at him again. With a smile that shone through his entire expression, he said, We're having a baby girl. I didn't waste a single second molding myself to him, and he didn't try to stop me. In fact, his hands and mouth were as frantic as mine as we tore at each other's clothes, needing to be closer, needing to put the final pieces of ourselves back together, as one. This time, when he kissed my bare stomach, whispering secret devotions to our daughter, I didn't have to pretend it was real. When he looked me in the eyes and told me he loved me, I didn't have to try to convince myself that he saw me. I knew without a doubt that he didn't see anyone else, and after it was all over, I had my ear pressed to his chest, listening to the beating heart of the man I loved. You really want me to move in with you? I whispered as he held me against him. For now. I pushed up on my elbow and stared down at him, waiting for him to explain more. When he didn't, I asked, What's that supposed to mean? Like, you only want to live with me for a little while? I never said that. You said for now. Yeah, because at some point, I'll want more. Sensing my shock, he fingered my hair out of my face and tucked the strands behind my ear. I'll want you to take my last name. After that, I may want you to give me a son, or another daughter, or both. And then when you think I couldn't possibly want more, I'll want to grow old with you. My eyes burned from the tears that begged to be released. He swiped one finger beneath my lashes, catching the lone drop of emotion that I hadn't been able to fight off, and said, But I know that will take time. I'm well aware that you're only here because of some malfunction with the condom. You weren't given the choice. I just hope that in time, you won't feel like you want a choice anymore. And the only thing you'll desire is to be my wife, my partner. Till death do us part. I leaned over him and grazed his lips with mine. I've always heard about people being blinded by love, but really, I think most of us are blinded by the pain of something we perceived as love. When it was never really love at all. And that keeps us from seeing what we need. Who we need. That's when the choice is taken from us and decided by something greater. Something that knows what we need more than we do. That sounds about right. I've always wanted a family. But after having my heart shattered and my dreams destroyed, I stopped believing in the picture. Everything felt like a lie. The idea of marriage and kids no longer seemed like a happy one, but instead was full of pain and uncertainty. It wasn't until you came along that I realized just how wrong that theory was. 
You make me happy, Aaron. I think I would have fallen for you even if you hadn't knocked me up while pretending I was someone else. Kelsey, I've never pretended you were anyone else. My brow tightened as I regarded him with unspoken curiosity. I may not have known your name at the time or known who you were. Hell, I didn't know a single thing about you. But that didn't mean I wished you were someone else. The only thing I pretended that night was that you saw me for me. And that we loved each other. Then I guess you got your wish, huh? I'm not sure. Did I? Well, yeah. I see you for you. And? No matter how hard he fought against it, his lips twitched with a hidden smile. And you love me. Laughter tore through my chest as he flipped me over, landing on top of me while holding himself up with one hand and tickling my side with the other. Barely able to breathe through the bursts of happiness that invaded my soul, I added, And I love you too. His fingers immediately left my side, just as his mouth closed over mine in the most possessive kiss I'd ever experienced. And in the blink of an eye... The dominant side of him returned, warmed by the protective side and softened by his inner teddy bear. He situated himself between my thighs, lifted my arms over my head, and pinned my wrists to the carpet beneath us. The entire time he kept his eyes on mine, and as he moved into me, owning me, claiming me, there wasn't a single ounce of my being that questioned his love for me. I only prayed he could feel the same thing from me. My orgasm climbed higher and higher, and as he tumbled off the cliff with me, he tattooed the words, I love you, against my shoulder with his teeth. And once I had calmed down enough to speak, I whispered, Yes. Yes, what? Confusion deepened his green eyes. Yes, we'll move in. Under one condition, though. A coy grin tipped one side of his mouth. What condition might that be? You don't wait for someday to ask me to marry you. Are you saying you want me to ask you now? I'm saying I'm ready when you are. I would just like to point out that I think it's utter crap that you trusted Rebecca with the sex of your baby and not me. She used to date your ex-fiance. I'm your best friend. I lifted my middle finger in Tatum's face. Which is why Jason wouldn't let you be the secret keeper. He knew you'd give it away somehow. She made a good point, as did Jason. Plus, we needed someone who could bake. I love you, Kels, but that's not you. Look at the bright side, though. We get to find out at the same time. Yeah, as does literally everyone else in the room. Way to make me feel special, Tater. Be happy you get to find out at all. That was a cheap shot, referring to the fact that Aaron and I had agreed to keep our own secrets for a while. After keeping things from each other so long, we'd decided to have a few secrets that no one else knew about, such as our baby being a girl. I rolled my eyes and stuck the spoons into the various dips on the snack table. I still think you should have gone with one of my ideas. Cutting into a cake is so anticlimactic. Every suggestion you came up with involved a mess. I don't know why you're complaining about that. You're a walking, talking mess just waiting to happen. I'd suggested the guests shoot them with paintballs, colored either blue or pink, but then she'd pointed out that might hurt, so I'd compromised with silly string, to which she'd given me an adamant no. After that, I'd gone with a few tamer ideas like glitter bombs, fairy dust explosions, confetti showers. Yet she'd turned them all down using the ridiculous excuse that they'd make too much of a mess, and in the end, she'd gone with some stupid cake idea. So lame. When you decide to reveal what you're having, you can do it any which way you want. Unfortunately for you, this is my party and I want a damn cake. Here, let me cut you a piece. I almost had the knife to the frosting before she yanked my arm away, realizing what I was about to do. What was that for? You said you wanted cake. Erin, she yelled over her shoulder. Come get your baby mama. A few seconds later, the sexiest pair of arms came up from behind me, wrapping themselves around my growing waist. A strong chest pressed against my back at the same time his heated breath hit my ear, filling it with the deep rumbles of his intoxicating voice. 
I can't wait for the day that I get to hear her call you my wife. I turned in his arms and locked mine around his neck, lifting myself onto my tiptoes to whisper, I guess you'll just have to settle for hearing me call myself your wife for now. I'm not ready to let anyone in our bubble just yet. You do realize they'll all be pissed at us when they find out that we went off and got married yesterday behind everyone's backs, don't you? Are you prepared for that? I pulled away just enough to stare at him with wide eyes. Are you trying to say you want to tell them? Nope. Just making sure you won't regret it. I ordered a stripper to help me feel better after seeing my ex, and then took him home and let him have his way with me. Then I moved the stripper, who turned out not to be a stripper, into my place and, once again, let him have his way with me. All of which has led us here. Married, pregnant, and happy. Aaron, there's not a single bit of any of that worth regretting. And the one thing I do regret more than anything else is already water under the bridge. So stop worrying about me. Get a room, you two, Jason said, as he came up behind Aaron, slapping him on the shoulder. Just not one of mine. Aaron pulled away with laughter curling his lips and brightening his eyes. Happiness was a good look on him, and I'd do anything to keep it written all over his face. Tatum sidled up next to me once the guys walked out back. Now it was only the two of us in front of the kitchen table, surrounded by snacks and a cake that held the day's biggest surprise. She looked at me and I looked at her, and without a single word spoken between us, we both knew what the other was thinking. I'm pretty sure if you stick a toothpick into the bottom, no one will ever know. That only works if the cake isn't done. Thank God I didn't leave the baking up to you. I elbowed her and frowned. Then how are we supposed to see what color the inside is? I guess we wait until it's time to cut into it. Or I grabbed a plastic fork from the tray and stuck the very bottom of the cake in the back. Oops, I accidentally fell into it with this here fork and oh, look, it's... I peeked at the small crumbs of cake that stuck to the frosting. Oh my god, Tatum, you're having a boy. Really? Her dark eyes grew wide glistening with excitement and surprise. A boy? How exciting is this? Too bad our kids will be somewhat related. Otherwise, they could have gotten married. I was so happy for my best friend that I didn't once think about the words that came out of my mouth. She froze mid-clap and dropped her mouth open. Wait! You're having a girl? It's crazy, right? How could you keep that from me? As soon as I saw her eyes water, mine followed suit. Trust me, it wasn't nearly as hard as keeping the wedding a secret. You're getting married? I shook my head, relieved that I finally got to tell Tatum the most exciting news of my life. No, we already did. We went to the courthouse yesterday. She jumped and wrapped her arms around me, both of us caught up in the extreme levels of happiness that poured from our eyes. Even when Jason and Aaron returned from the backyard, we still didn't separate. What's going on here? Jason asked, speaking over Aaron's concerned question of, Is everything okay? Tatum sniffled and pulled away, only enough to turn her head so that we were both looking at the guys. And like them, we spoke at the same time, while she said, They got married at the courthouse yesterday and didn't tell anyone. I announced, You're having a boy. When the guys started to speak over each other again... My mother showed up out of nowhere and moved between the four of us, becoming the center of our circle. One at a time. I can't possibly keep up when you're all talking over each other. Apparently, Jason got to speak first. They cut into the cake and found out what we're having before the reveal. I didn't do anything. Tatum held up her hands in defense. That was all Kelsey. Ignoring my mom's glare, I shrugged and said, I tripped. And the fork I had in my hand accidentally nicked the bottom of it. There was no cutting. You all should be happy that I didn't fall over and hurt the defenseless unborn child in my belly. Wait one minute here. Mom glanced between all of us before bringing her attention back to me. Is it a boy or a girl? Girl, I answered, once again not contemplating the words that came out of my mouth. Baby brain was a real thing, and it made me stupid. But I was with child, so it was excused. Mom clapped and turned to Tatum. You're having a girl? No, Tatum pointed to me. She is. 
My mom's tears nearly gutted me, but the smile on her face brought me back to life. I'm going to have a granddaughter. You do remember Lizzie, don't you? Marlena's child? Your granddaughter? She waved me off just before wrapping me in her arms. This is excellent news. Without releasing her hold on me, she craned her neck to see Tatum over her shoulder. So you're having a boy, then? A baby boy and a baby girl. I feel so blessed. I guess there's no point in having the party now since everyone already knows what we're having, Jason muttered with an exasperated shake of his head. Sure there is. Tatum was amazing at getting out of trouble. I loved her for it. We can use it to celebrate Aaron and Kelsey's wedding that no one was invited to. Tatum had a big mouth. I couldn't think of anything other than shoving a sock into it. You're... what? Mom's tears returned, though this time they weren't filled with happiness. You got married and didn't tell anyone? For the love of... all the things... Everyone around me called out, finishing my sentence. Yes. As a matter of fact, for the love of all the things, I quirked one side of my upper lip, which was the universal facial expression equivalent to the middle finger. This isn't about me. It's about Tatum and her impatience to dig into the cake before everyone got here. I had to be delusional if I thought I'd get out of that one. Your father is going to be heartbroken, Kelsey. Mom's dramatic tear-filled remark would have worked better had she not waited until my dad had approached. You stole his chance to walk his daughter down the aisle. Seriously, Mom? Do you not remember Marlena, your other daughter? Dad walked her down the aisle so I didn't steal anything from him. Dad cocked his head to the side and held me in his stare. Why can't I walk you too? She ran off with this handsome doctor and got married without any of us there. A beaming smile stretched across Dad's lips as he turned to face Aaron. That's excellent news. Congratulations, son. Welcome to the family. I couldn't do anything except roll my eyes and groan as they shook hands. And when Aaron turned his attention to me, likely analyzing how I was holding up now that everyone knew the secrets we'd agreed to keep to ourselves or questioning how I'd been able to keep the baby a secret for so long, yet had spilled the beans on the first chance I got. I just shrugged. Too late now, Aaron. You're stuck with this. Forever. Rather than answer, he winked and returned his infectious smile to my dad. I couldn't be happier. Me, either. Epilogue. Aaron. It's too early. She's not ready. Kelsey cried as she cradled her round stomach in her arms, sobbing in the passenger seat. No, it's not, and she's okay. Her due date wasn't for another two weeks, though at the last checkup, we'd been told it could be any day. Apparently, any day in pregnancy terms means two days. Just keep up with the breathing. You're doing great. We'll be at the hospital in no time. I grabbed my phone from the center console and tried Jason again. I'd called Kelsey's parents several times, but no one had answered, and I didn't have Marlena's number in my phone. It wouldn't have been a big deal had we not accidentally left Kelsey's cell at the house, but I wasn't about to turn around for that. Someone had to answer a call at some point, and once that happened, I trusted the news would spread like wildfire. But again, Jason's voicemail came on, and I hung up. I didn't want to drop Kelsey off at the hospital doors without anyone with her. I didn't want to make her walk up from the parking lot either. Luckily, I spotted an empty parking spot in the first row as soon as I pulled in. It was the best compromise I could have come across. Although, with as close as her contractions were, I doubted she'd make it to the front doors without having to stop and curse me out. She'd gotten really good at that over the last hour. By some small miracle, we made it inside and up to the second floor where the labor and delivery unit was located without much incident. But just as we came to the front desk, all hell broke loose. Ironically, it had nothing to do with the baby that fought to break free from Kelsey's womb. No, the commotion was caused by none other than the Peterson clan. Her mom sidled up beside us, flanked by her dad and Marlena. 
A quick glance over my shoulder proved that the others, Jason's mom, Nick, and Marlena's kids, were all in the waiting room. It's about time you got here, Kelsey's mom said with concern lining her brow. Uh, we came as fast as we could. She's been in labor for hours. I glanced at Kelsey, who currently had my hand in a vice-like grip while she spoke to the nurse behind the counter, and then back to her mother. It's only been bad for the last hour or so. I wouldn't say it's been that long. And you're not supposed to get here until contractions are close together anyway. Once that happened, we headed straight here. Oh. Her eyes lost the bewilderment and opened wide. You've been in touch with Jason? I shook my head and winced at the finger that my wife had likely just snapped in two. No, I haven't been able to get a hold of him. I've tried to call him ever since we left the house. Then how would you know how close her contractions are? Again, I turned to assess Kelsey at my side, then swung my attention back to her mother. Because I've been timing them? It came out as more of a question than an answer, simply because I had no idea what this woman was getting at, and if she didn't hurry it up, I'd have to learn how to change a diaper with one hand. Why in the world would you be timing Tatum's contractions? Confusion stunned me silent. But as soon as Kelsey released her hold on me, it tore me from the news of Tatum's labor and brought me back to why we were here in the first place. I glanced to the side to see what was going on, and I noticed the nurse had come around the counter and had one hand on my wife's lower back. I wasn't sure what they were about to do, but either way it required my attention and focus. But before I could ask what was going on, Kelsey peered over her shoulder, glared at her mom, and said, My contractions, mom. And then I followed the nurse and Kelsey down the hall, leaving the frantic crowd behind. A little over two hours later, I sat on the side of Kelsey's hospital bed, completely lost in the sight of my daughter in her arms. I'd never known a love like this, nor had I ever imagined it possible. But here I sat, happily drowning in the emotion. Did you know that all the nurses are convinced that we did this on purpose? Tatum asked as Jason wheeled her and their new baby into our room. I laughed and told them that if they thought I'd hold this giant of a baby in for an extra week just to deliver on the same day as you, then they were insane. Kelsey laughed softly, as if she worried she'd wake the baby if she were any louder. If I remember correctly, when you found out I was pregnant, you were most excited about having someone to share the experience with. You can't share it more than we just did. It would have been better to have had you at my side, and then to be at your side a couple of weeks later. But I guess you're right. Best to have just gotten it over with so we can start sharing the experiences of motherhood together. Jason helped Tatum onto the other side of the bed so that both women could sit side by side, each holding a baby in her arms. Once we had them situated, Jason looked at me and nudged his head to the side, motioning me to follow him to the other side of the room. They'll be here in about 60 seconds, he muttered beneath his breath with an eye on his wife, likely to make sure she didn't overhear him. It's best to stay back and blend in with the room. They go after the women and children first. I tried to keep my composure, but I lost the battle. Humor rattled my shoulders and burned my cheeks. And before it waned, the door opened, and in came a flock of Petersons, all cooing and smiling, oblivious to the two of us against the wall. Who do we have here? Jason's mom asked as she approached the bed, as if she had no clue who these babies were. I joked, but in all honesty... I was one lucky son of a bitch to be included in this group of people. My parents had planned to be here next weekend, not expecting Kelsey to go into labor two weeks early. And rather than change flights and mom's doctor's appointments that had been scheduled for before their trip, they decided it would be best to come after we'd gotten back home and the local excitement had settled some. Tatum shifted the little blue bundle in her arms and said, Meet William James Watson. And when Kelsey's mom slid around to stand next to her daughter, Kelsey glanced down at the pink swaddle in her arms and said, Mom, meet Kimberly Diane Bacchus. 
Even though we'd agreed on names long ago, my heart still grew larger at the sound of my mother's name. But we're going to call her Kimmy. Why would you do that? Diane is such a lovely name. I'm not calling her Diane, Mom. You're lucky I even used your name in any part of it. With a smile, her mom stepped back and held up her phone, causing the whole room to groan. Just a few snapshots, please. You've had a few. Now put the camera away. Diane waved her daughter off and went back to fussing over the babies. When might you give me a grandson? Kelsey pointed to the little boy at the foot of the bed standing next to his mother and sister. Really, Mom? Connor's right there. Would you like me to introduce you to your grandson, since you seem to have forgotten him? Don't be silly. My mother-in-law shook her head. Of course I haven't forgotten him. Jason leaned against my shoulder and lowered his voice so no one would overhear. You've been around long enough to have an opinion on this. Does it seem to you that Kelsey's the favorite and Marlena's the forgotten child? I bit my lip to keep from drawing attention our way. Yeah, but for some reason, Kelsey believes her sister's the golden baby and she's the red-headed stepchild. He slapped my shoulder with a smile stretched across his face. Good luck with her, bro. I didn't need luck. I had all I'd ever wanted right here.